Okay, I'm very late, but I've been sat here for like five minutes trying to figure out why why in my browser it doesn't say I'm live. I it, I am, I checked, but well, it, it says I'm live, but it's not showing my bitrate, so mm, you know what? It's probably fine. Anyway, it's go Elysium, let me launch it. Oh, I think last time, what? I fucking went unconscious, and then it looked like the credits were gonna roll, and then the credits didn't roll? And then, I I don't know what else. <laughs> I, I think we, like, saw the body, and then couldn't get it down, and there was Kuno. Oh god, and there's, like, the racist lorry driver. Okay, I remember now. <laughs> oh no. Oh, this is gonna be a bit of a wild one, huh? <laughs> Fuck. Alright, it's fine. Oh, there we go. Mm, let me check. Yeah, no, it still isn't saying my bitrate. Uh, I'm gonna just hope that's fine. I <laughs> I don't know what to do about it. That has me kind of concerned. Uh, yeah. Oh well. I guess that'll. I guess that's fine. I'll have to live with it. <sighs> I'm gonna try refreshing the page one more time. I need to just close my browser when I stream. I can't stop checking it. You know what? It's fine. Okay. Yep, Disco Elysium. Here we go. Martinez, day two. And it's almost the end of the fucking day, and I still haven't gotten the body down to, like, look at it. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm rich. I forgot. Okay, what do we got? What's on the list? Ooh, I could level. What do I want to level up? I'm researching White Morning, and I have rigorous self-critique, some kind of superstar, Detective Cousteau. Oh, I don't know what to take. What are my white checks? Hmm. Okay, I can try these now if I want. Ooh, I don't know. I can understand the cop culture, is this a good idea? Because I want to research all this stuff, too. Is it a good idea to get these early? I don't even know. We're doing it. I want to become Detective Cousteau. Yep. We're becoming Detective Cousteau. What is this white line between, between these? Does this matter? I, don't, I think that's just like a, a HUD thing. Okay. Here we go. Uh, now I have to... What do I have to do now? Oh, wait, no. I can talk to Joyce right now and, and see... What? Whatever the white check is? Every time I play this, I kind of got to remember, like, how you're supposed to play this. More lessons in basic this? Reality? Think of something close My to you. What is... Today. Six kilometers south Here we go. In the Valley of Dogs. Junior officer Chad Tilbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. Oh god, I just looked at my water bottle. Oh no. How did I put so much ice in this? It's fine. Right. Rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. To his left, his partner, Emil Mullins, whispers, You heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez? Tequila Sunset? Is that me? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, Emil. He pulls it out slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. Okay, I'm I'm Tequila Sunset. Got it? We always do. What am I? You? You're an officer of the RCM. She says energetically, the Revishal Citizens Militia. Preciso Mundo. Uh, good. And what is the RCM? Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revishal. Detective. Yeah. Yes, we are the Revachol Citizens Militia. I feel like I was supposed to see this dialogue way earlier. Anyway, you said de facto. Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the twilight of international law, both at the behest of the coalition government. Why do I? I, 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 I want to wash my hands. Why do I want to wash my hands? 
I don't know why I get like this. Okay, what do you mean? The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the Emergency, Wayfarer, and Aliments Acts. Three pieces of legislation keeping the city in a, let's be honest, laissez-faire stasis to the benefit of foreign capital. I see. All three are good to know when we are out policing. So basically I'm a lackey of capital? There's nothing basic about your role, detective. It's true that the RCM keeps everything the way our seemingly permanent provisional rulers like it. He leans in. Yet, on the other hand, I know these people. I deal with them daily. Let me tell you, dear, they are not fans of you. Oh, good. Why? The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revachol in the 20th Do I have time to be talking to you? It's 1800 hours. Oh, no. The river. Gang warfare. A botched privatization scheme. A nuclear pile meltdown. Gang warfare, botched privatiza privatization scheme, nuclear meltdown. Okay. They called it the International Zone because no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The RCM restored peace where the coalition failed. A true blue citizen's initiative. They will never forgive you. Okay. Hmm. That's somewhat of an exaggeration. In reality, ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Ravasholians get to keep the peace in Ravashol, and the coalition doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> anyway, sorry to intrude. Please continue. He really just, he, he had to pull out that I'm actually, and I love him for it. Yes, Lieutenant. Permit me to conclude with this. Who you are, to me, is the police. The only legitimate law enforcement authority in Ravashol. Hmm. Say nothing. And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, I'm here to help. He bows and smiles. Uh. Okay, so I only get one question per level. Oh, shit. Okay. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Oh, wait, one sec. I gotta turn off my space heater. It's too hot in here. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Where's my earbud? I gotta remember where I put this down, because every single time I lose it, and I... It takes me like 20 minutes. 20 minutes? 20 seconds to find it. 20 minutes?! Okay. Calm down. Ugh. What leads am I... Do I, do I want to go to the racist people? Split a kilo with Kuno. Flat 12 in the Capeside apartment building. How do you get in there? Isn't that, isn't that the old lady here? Isn't that this? I think that's this. A sturdy metal door guards the- Madame, uh, there is no- no. The door. Don't bang on the door! <laughs> the no, no, yeah, I, I tried all this. Okay. It's not here. Can I talk to you? Hello again, officers. Have you- Uh... I feel like I'm missing way too much over here. Wait, what's this? Why is it blue? Why is it blue and not green? <gasps> Signal blue naval coat. Huh. I mean, I... Yeah, I guess that's fine. I don't think I'm putting it on, but... I have it. I like my cool green coat too much. It goes with my really sexy frog, uh... uh visor? Is it even a frog? Yes, it's a frog. Amphibian, amphibian sports visor. Love that. Okay. I think I think the only thing I really have to do right now... Well, mm, I want to go back up here. Hold on. This is the last time I'm coming over here today. Look, does Kuno care? Oh, Kuno okay. Doesn't and I can't look at these, uh, these tracks. There are several footprints in the mud, left right. by work boots. Okay. I have no way to get the body down. There, he still is, looking right through you, with his wife. Uh-huh. Do I have to pass that check to be able to really I examine the body? Squeal. 
that might be the case. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get more endurance. Okay. I'm gonna keep that in mind for next level. It's almost the end of day two. God damn, I haven't done anything. So, the game said five days or something. Does that mean total five days or five days from now? I think it meant five days from now, so you get a week. Now it's turning into a kind of... No. I'm not doing the poet thing again. <laughs> uh, that was probably the best line of dialogue in the whole game, though. I don't think this game's gonna get any better than that, that conversation. Yep. Do I have anything to talk about with you? Looking for something? No, I don't want to ask him for a smoke. Uh, who are you? Or no, let, let's go here. Bastards! We have a right to work. The man yells towards the harbor gates. His voice is the loudest of the lot. Oddly screechy for a man of his size. Uh. I am the law. Yes, people get that you are the law. You really don't have to keep saying it. No, I have to. It's funny. Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. The broad-shouldered alpha male turns to you. He's a full head taller than anybody else here. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. Uh, why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Um. So he's like a straight. No, he's a scab, right? Uh. I mean. It it seems like the the strike isn't really for. A good reason right now, because the it, I'm trying to remember. They had like a bunch of really absurd demands. And it kind of seems like the reason those demands are even a thing is because the people at the top, who are like the crime syndicate brothers, want to pause trade so they can smuggle in drugs or something. Fuck, I don't even remember. Uh. But I don't have problems with a cause, not inherently. I'm thinking no. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to to work! I'll work harder than anyone. Oh shit. Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Okay. What kind of cause are we talking about? Rights of people. Rights of workers. To have gainful employment. To make a salary. And feed their family. Okay, uh, I don't think I've chosen any sides yet. Might be time. Don't let the fat bastards tread on you. Cops tend to side with the higher-ups, but you're essentially still workers. I don't trust cops, but I can see you understand the Right to work! Right to work! Uh-huh, I have some questions for you. So I think it was, what, the people, like the union? Is the side that has the very tall, uh, like, tattooed racist man? I don't remember. I, I'm, I'm looking out for a, lull, a, a large racist guy with a lot of tattoos, because I think Joyce said something about that. Right. Maybe you should ask them the questions, like, why we're not allowed to make a living here? Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. He points his finger at the man sitting on the railing. So do we, Scott. Call me Menyana, okay? The loitering man hollers in return. Uh Are you a mercenary hired by Wild Pines? Hell no. I'm just an honest scab. I won't have talk like that around here. You understand? His neck muscles tense up. The veins on his neck. Oh bulge. shit, he's bulging. Uh, be careful, he's holding it deep in, but there are things in there you don't want to meet. Okay, is there a tribunal being convened by any chance? Fucking fuck. He breathes out slowly, his giant chest deflating and his mouth slightly open. How about you fuck off now, huh? Okay, of course. Damn. 
Lieutenant says, his voice a soothing calm. He looks there at you. There could be weapons aiming at us right now. Somewhere above, in the buildings. The other Merc. Don't push this. He's thinking. This is not the time. Yeah, he's probably right. Okay. The man's breathing steadies, but his eyes are still narrow. Slowly, he's trying to get his right-to-work dance back on. Uh, I want to get in too. Have fun. Union shits are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through the gates. I'm trying to meet their fat boss. Uh, that's the Everard guy, right? Um... I'm interviewing people about a murder that took place behind the ho hostile cafeteria. I know nothing about a murder. His reply is snappy and terse. The mention of a killing sends a barely noticeable shiver of tenseness through him. Interesting. Oh, why so tense? What are you talking about? I'm not tense, you're tense. Yes, he's tense. And dangerous. Somewhere below it all. Right to work! It's shameful. Cops doing nothing. You should bring back up, open up the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. Mmm. I'm gonna take the cowards away out. This isn't my area of expertise. We are not picking a side in this just yet, sir. Pity. Let us work! What's a strike? Oh, shit. When a bunch of ungrateful, lazy cockroaches can't get their act together, decide to block honest work for other people. He shifts uncomfortably in his workers' overalls. What do the strikers want? Beats me. They mumble nonsense about boardrooms and workers' rights, while we have the... Right to work! So, if I'm remembering right, the whole thing was that the demands this time are that they want each of their, what, 2,000 employees to each sign, uh, to, to each sign forms every single time something happens in the workplace or something? I think... And it was something about how the higher-ups are intentionally making there be, uh, absurd demands because there's a front to what they're actually doing? When the man okay. moves around, you perceive some serious abs underneath his tight-fitting Oh, shit. This man is in shape. There's something odd in the way he carries himself. His set of clothing looks vaguely mismatched. The different pieces of the attire seem ill-fitting. Ill-fitting. What does that mean? His shirt is far too small and an unpleasantly tight fit, while the overalls held up by a belt seem to fit a man with much more corpulence. Huh. His shirt is too small and an unpleasantly tight fit. Overalls held up by a belt. Hmm. Wearing new clothes? He ignores your question, choosing instead to turn to the emaciated workers. Raising both fists in the air. The clothes are obviously not his. Uh-oh. Silence is the answer. There's something off here, but he won't say what. You've been talking to him for quite a while now. Something is off with this guy. Ask him where he's from. Hmm. Uh, who are all the strike breakers? A look around. Honest men and women with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. God, I, I forgot again to shave that one little part of my cheeks that... God damn it, I can't stop touching them. Man runs a hand through his steadily graying military haircut. We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in time of crisis. If union fucks don't want work, they ought to let in those who do want work. I have a question. Why do all these men follow your leadership? You think they follow because I'm big and loud? No. They follow the rules of the market, the rules of the economy, because they were given a job to do! I see. Okay, what's your goal here? We were promised work. We'd be in there, working, if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. And you're unable to breach the entrance. Main gate's locked. Would take heavy ordinance to bust it open and try to get in through the secretary's office. Door's locked. The guards blocking the way to the access panel. And I don't mean the scrawny mess punk either. 
I mean head measurer. Or whatever he is. Head measurer. Oh, that might be the guy. Didn't he have a weird nickname? Head measurer. Huge Seminese guy standing up there on the overhead passage. Won't let anyone by. The access panel is right behind him. How bad could one guy be? You seem capable. Bad. Standing on a narrow bridge, he's got a strategically advantageous position. And he's trained. Got it. Okay. I don't know how the Union has a trained killer up there. But that one's no joke. And my men are tired and hungry. They're workers, not fighters. Yeah, that's fair. Uh... Why don't you just talk to them? Like civilized folk, you mean? These native fucks don't understand oh, okay. civilized. I see. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home. At least for now. If you can't get in anyway. No! They will give up eventually. Or get drunk. Leave the button unguarded. Then we charge. The man rubs his jaw, a perfect, slightly bearded, square wedge. He seems to be following his orders well enough for now, but beneath it all, there is a boiling rage and a dangerous carelessness. Oh man. Do not be fooled by the programming. There is a precarious balance inside him, keeping him in check, but it's shaky as hell, and he's tired of it all. I wonder how many days will be left before this whole thing. I, I think they said, again, that was the five days thing. Is how many days there are before everything falls apart. I'm gonna leave. Uh, I don't think Kim has anything new to say. Yes. Nope. Okay. Oh, look at the gate. That's a huge gate. It says G-R-I-H. That's a fucking massive gate, huh? Oh wait, I keep repositioning my mic. That's fine. Uh, you. Who are you? Scott? Asks a man with jolly eyes tilting his head. What did he just call you? A- Oh no, not this again. You just got away from that fucking kid. Oh my god. Uh... I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. Uh, what is a scab? A kind of a Get all the dialogue. Then with mere survival, they come. They want to do our job for shittier pay, screwing over both themselves and us. Everybody loses. Uh, where they all come from? It's me. Somewhere in the ground, I think. Goddamn, you don't seem to like them much. Gotta be bloody stupid, or freaking evil to scab. Or I guess scared maybe, but scared of what? Of who? He looks at the mask, squinting his eyes as if he's trying to ascertain what they're scared of. Personally, I'd rather beg than scab. If the gentleman shouting on the street came begging, maybe they'd have gotten something. Uh... I, I gotta talk to him manipulatively. Manipulatively? It's like pathologic, you gotta, you gotta be a yes man to everybody so you can get the most info, right? Have you tried talking to them? We'd explain the matters, but they don't listen. This lot would be reasonable and go home if the big guy wasn't riling them up all the time. Uh, I don't want to deal with this again. Did you just call me the F slur? No, no, I said scab. Got it. Uh, I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> he chuckles, then realizes. Speaking of, what brings the RCM here? To the wild north? Come to see the stripe? Oh, I thought they... okay. <laughs> I thought this was a typo. I thought it was meant to say strike. I've come to Martinez investigating a murder. A murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. What if you did it? It's actually very fun and easy. Uh, I don't think so. I'm 91% sure it'll never get solved. Whisper, I have no idea what I'm doing. Maybe you want to help me by telling me who did it? Of course, policia. It wasn't me. You can rule me out. Easier that way. Should we? He's nice. I don't like nice. Yeah, it might be him. Hmm. I need to know what's behind these gates. I'm exploring. My friend, I respect the right to roam. The open range awaits. 
He gazes over the roundabout with a glint of longing. Does this mean you can let me through? I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a granter of passage. The passage grants itself. <sighs> Ooh, I got that ice cold water. That's good. That's simple. I just walk in. I walk right past Measurehead and go in. Measurehead, right. That, that was the name. Measurehead. Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Semini Supremus is there. Walk right past him. Right. Then press the button to unlock the door. Uh-huh. Then go past him again. Okay. And you enter the arbor through the office. Está. For some reason, I don't think it'll be that easy. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure head in a physical composition. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, we're gonna fuck him up, dude. Or you could convert to a Semini supremacist worldview. Oh, no. Or... Hmm. Maybe it actually is completely impossible. Oh, are those my only two choices? I don't want to. I don't want to be a supremacist. Uh, has anyone here ever bested him? Not yet. No. He's incredibly strong. Nothing a couple of solid hooks from Dexter and Sinister won't fix. Oh, we're gonna fuck him up. Has any of the scabs tried converting to his worldview? Jean-Luc himself would say the philosophy has proven overly heroic for the scabs to convert to. Not enough intuition. Got it. Another thing. Sure. He whistles a jaunty tune, the wind rustling his whiskers. Uh... I'm a worker like you. Show him the stolen card. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. The man looks at the colorful piece of plastic. Then at you. Then back at the card. Then at you again. Um, but that's not you, officer. It's an old picture. From back when you were not a cop, but a heavy set, dark skinned dock worker named Santiago Jean? Yes. <laughs> yes, actually. Highly unlikely. I've known Jean for several years now. Also, you told me you're a cop, remember? How did you get his shift card? Uh. It was like a sign. The wind deposited it before my feet. I feel a closeness to this person. Yes, the city has a way of pairing souls. John's been out drinking himself blind. He should be more careful than Johannes. Can I have the card? No, it will prove useful still. Believe your thieving fingers. Uh... No, I'm afraid. The card's evidence in an ongoing investigation. Oh, shit. We're oh. doing it. Is my friend in some sort of trouble? Who knew? I'm surprised that worked. Uh, I'm short on money. Can you give me some of it? Sure thing, my friend. I can help you out. He flips a coin towards you. Ooh, catch it. The coin narrowly slips by your outstretched fingers and falls. To well, now I feel pathetic. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to throw it like that. It's a thing we harbor folk do, passing around cargo and such. It was not meant as provocation or ridicule. The boy Adero stares at you with respect, then gestures towards the trickles of blood adorning your clothes. What? That I don't think that's what that said, huh? I guess... I guess that's a bug? Appreciated. Right, always glad to help out the RCM. I guess that was a we bug. the same branch you and I. Humans, I mean, not slithering scabs. What's the strike about anyway? You know, serious business. I'm sure the big boss will be glad to tell you. You'll have to ask him first. He's a chatty guy. Wants to talk about the strike. Return once you've met the union boss and are on a better footing with the organization. Uh, good talk. Gotta get moving. Bye bye. Hold there's nothing. Right okay, there's nothing else. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna deal with big man on campus. I don't think it's gonna work. But, uh, you know. Maybe. Here we go. There's no way. Wait, what's this? What's all this stuff on the roof? How do I get up? Case of a strike, press button behind guard. Oh, no. Hermetically sealed door, locked by electronic means. There's no lock picking or door kicking this one. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, nar, dude. Oh, hey, cutie. How are you? Welcome to... Welcome to disco game. Welcome, welcome. Measure head makes all men quiver, okay? The Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor. 
He's got he's got the ladies swoonin'. And JR, hello. Hello, hello. I should save before I confront this man. This this racist. Sweet, man. baby! Oh, thank you for the eleven months, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh I don't know how close I can approach. I guess I'm fine here. Did not have nightmares after visage. Visage, am I pronouncing that right? More than enough to please a woman, no one will get past you. Is did they just sit here all day like just giving him compliments? I guess that's fair. Uh Oh, he's really tall. Oh no. How is that game though? I kinda wanna play it. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. Alright, well that was fast. Yeah, measure head. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. The young woman at the giant side agrees. Oh Jesus. Oh, here we go. The most terrifying game you've played. Oh, okay. Maybe maybe I'll pick it up then. I know there's a sale right now. You wish someone would give you compliments all day. Well, you just have to be... How tall is this guy? Like, seven feet tall? <laughs> and also, a uh, supremacist, apparently. Say nothing. Size him up first. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? A ripple of muscle passes underneath his skin. He lets you look. Oh, shit. It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this... <laughs> Buying some platforms. Be calm, I'm Sandwich. You are not in danger. Because you are not a threat to me. I see. Uh, this is gonna be... This is gonna be an interesting convo. And I thought... I thought the fucking I thought the racist lorry driver was interesting. This is gonna be even wilder. You're also proud of me? Oh thank you. Thanks, Dad. Oh shit, puff out your chest, still say nothing. <laughs> my body does not betray my degeneracy. Uh <laughs> Oh god, I don't know how to get past this man. Still what say nothing. Is this? androgynous display of sexual maturity. He looks down at you, taking stock of your physique. Oh shit, he's into it. You hear your heart pumping fast and irregular. Your joints ache and you feel old, but still alive. I'm gonna Somehow. win. I'm gonna kick his ass, come on. Stop it. You are embarrassing yourself in front of this woman and your pedomorphic friend. Oh, God. Did I ever play Silent Hill for the room? Uh, I've never played any Silent Hill game. I kind of want to, though. <clears throat> this display of weakness may appeal to older women with a stronger maternal instinct, but it is a liability here on Battlefield Martinez. Oh, God. Jean Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him She holds her nose. I kind of forget that my guy canonically smells like shit all the time. Easter egg slash achievement that's a reference to it in this game? What do you mean my body betrays my degeneracy? You have succumbed to Al-Ghul. What does that mean? His face contorts in disgust as if he were smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Alhul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. There's an achievement that's a reference to it in Visage. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't played any Silent Hills. I haven't played a ton of horror games. I'm trying to think of the ones I have played. Um, I've played Resident Evil, but I feel like those are more action-y than horror. Uh, I played, uh, both the Outlast games. I actually streamed them both. I forgot about that. Uh, what else? No, that's the- that's the big two that kind of stick out in my- in my brain. Okay, what does- <laughs> Smell your breath, Kim, is it really so bad? It's not good. Oh, no. It's like a rat crawled into your stomach, got drunk, and drowned. <laughs> 
Oh no! RE7 was spooky? Eh, yeah, kinda. It was spooky in parts. I don't know, I think I just... I'm bad at immersing myself in games. So I don't get spooked as easily. I'll... What, what does this mean? Yes. Alhul. What does it mean? Alhul is an ancient Ilmaran poison. A parasitic fungus that has colonized your race. What? It is a trick the desert pygmies played on you. For humiliating them and stripping them of their land. I have to turn off all the lights and turn up the volume in my headphones. I probably won't do the second one because, uh... I don't remember- I don't remember what it's called, but it's this, uh, condition where loud noises physically hurt you. Hold on, I'm gonna look that up. Condition where loud noises hurt you. Uh, hyperacusis. Yep, I have that. So it makes it really hard to kind of, uh, I guess process what I'm hearing, but then also if there's really loud noises, it just really fucking hurts my head. So, probably not gonna turn up the volume in my headphones, but I, I'm i fine with playing games with the lights out. I don't generally like doing it because it hurts my eyes, but eh, I'll do it. Horror games are dark most of the time anyways, so. Um, this has nothing to do with why I'm here. Your life. The life of your race revolve around I see. Al Hul. It has everything to do with why you're here. I don't have a problem with Al Ghul, I just drink a little on the weekends. Your mouth moves, but the one who speaks is Al Ghul. You are but a vessel for the ghoul now. Very little well, a pun. of yourself remains. Explains why I don't get super scared since audio is a big thing. I can't have it loud enough to have the same effect, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I also need to get a new pair of headphones, cause uh... Or I guess earbuds, I don't use headphones. I don't like over-the-ear headphones, I, they bother me. I can only wear earbuds. But um... Uh, I always fidget with one of my earbuds, cause I don't like having them both in. And I just like, I break it, and then I can't use it anymore. So, I only have a left earbud right now. I, so, like, that's a whole, uh, like, separate audio channel I'm not hearing. But I haven't played horror games in, like, a while, so. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the ham sandwich race is waning. The ham sandwich race? I see. Did I get any more fidget toys? I did not. I still- I'm still using the Sonic Fidget Spinner, and, um, right now I'm fidgeting- like, literally as we speak, I'm fidgeting with a- a hair tie. A hair tie that I actually snapped, so then I had to, like, tie the two snapped pieces together. Uh... Oh, shit. I'm the police, and I need you to comply. Take a step closer. Do I want to escalate this? I probably- go I'm gonna have to. I'm just- I'm gonna be exhausted. The race stuff's unimportant here. I need you to help me do my job, please. Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Ablo Group has fallen. I see. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, uh -huh. electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. Uh huh. You dominated lesser cultures. Oh God, he's like really the racist. Like and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. Oof, eugenics. Yeah, eugenics is a bit of an oof. Bit of an oof. Not even the lorry driver can compare it to the the sheer level of racism this man's adopted. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. There is a button right behind him. Just out of reach. Oh, it shit. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. Ah. Uh... 
Come on, I just need you to move about 20 centimeters back. It is my task to keep the degenerate trunks from entering the arbor. Oh god. I don't want to agree with him. Listen, I... Mr. Tequila Sunset. He may not be a, a strong man, but he's a man of, of principles. I, I can't... I can't submit to his will. Push him out of the way. This isn't gonna work. I'm dead. <coughs> Alright. That is right. You should leave this stage of history with dignity. By inviting the other races to a great world war. I see. Okay. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. Oh, my throat hurts. I think I'm getting sick. The walls will be lined with bottles of al Hul. Your beloved. Oh, he's saying alcohol. Inside, we will right? He's saying alcohol. Alright. you call art. And your microcephalic skulls. Uh-huh. He didn't seem to give a fuck. No, he's, he's a pretty large man. This is your chance. He's talking. <gasps> rip into him with a punch and catch him off guard. Oh, shit. No, don't rip into anyone. You're sensitive. Remember? Communicate. Suggestion is against it. Oh, God, I only have a 30% chance to knock him out. Subscribe to his advanced race theory. No, don't. Uh, <laughs> Use the mug? Know anything about this mug? Show him the mug. He does not so much as glance at the object. Uh, Put this into the trash lately? Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. Alright, the mug approach did not work. Does he strike you as the kind of man who puts mugs into trash? Yeah, not really. Uh... Don't be such an asshole to your fellow dock worker. Show him the stolen ID card. Uh... I guess. He has no interest. He, he really doesn't. I don't know how to get past this man. The man looks at you, silent and unmoving. His eyes burrow into the remnants of your soul. <laughs> you are not Santiago. Santiago is not you. Even the frenically impaired can see this. Santiago is my persona. This really isn't working, huh? Wait, I can leave and then probably, like, save scum the punch. Should I do it? You serve the Union, aren't you? Aren't they white? Oh, uh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. He turns his eyes to the harbor, seemingly bored with you. I kind of want to save scum and punch him. Uh... Uh... You still serve them, how does that factor into your life? We gotta- we gotta turn the logic back on him. Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital. Something your race, nivistic communists, never did. Huh. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. Communism's pretty cool. I gotta select this. <laughs> Idiotic communism is the single greatest country. I'm building communism, I have to. Descent. Everywhere around you. The fruits of its failure to challenge the world order. Individualism. <laughs> ah, and yes, music, rock and roll music. Sexually transmitted. Famously diseases. communist. The famously communist sexually transmitted diseases. Above all, rampant multinational finance still reigning large. Oh boy. Tell me where have you gotten your love of pathetic communism from? Degenerate youth culture? Rock and roll music? Uh... 
Uh. Uh. Got it from Disco, actually. Offshoots of the Zemini's people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. Huh. It is a shame upon my race. But what is done is done. Listening to Fox News suddenly? Yeah, this is a, this is a pretty big offshoot from what the rest of the game's dialogue has been. I mean, there was the one racist lorry driver, but that's it, really. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. Okay. Okay, I'll ask. Who are the Seminese? The South Island race. Haplogroup R4R. We are the rightful masters of mm. the Insulindian Goodness. Archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus. I still have like a huge congealed block of ice inside my water. Millennia before you. We are the future. That is all you need to know. So you were born and raised on the islands before you moved to Ravishol. I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dreams. What is a genetic I dream? I see young Seminese women walk into the grey mass on Ile de Fontaine, waiting on immaculate conception from the pale. So you did come from the islands? No. I have heard about it on the radio. He would be appreciative if you did not further chase this line of inquiry in front of the women. Oh, shit. Oh, we're owning him with facts and logic. So you're not really Seminese, you're just from Ravishol. I'm from Kuron. And no, it is not just in Ravishol. The city is central to the Seminese strategy. Spreading through its trade networks, our culture will dominate the world. Uh-huh. You have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You have extinction to come to terms with. And never... I want to get in the harbor. the harbor. Uh, <laughs> Kim, what do you think about this? Kim, help. I think this racist is better than the last. But the next racist will be the really good one. Thank you, Kim. Uh, I like the previous racist better. Not really. How do you know there will be a next racist? There always is. Uh, yeah, you're not wrong. Race is reality. Uh-huh, he nods approvingly. He's not a racist, he's just a race realist. Okay. Um... Why are you not with the Hardy Boys? I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so-called Hardy Boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. But you're all part of the union. You were gonna say that. What were you gonna say? The hardy manlets are on the Manlets? The company. <laughs> oh shit. I answer to the union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Simonese. Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. Luxuriate in the company of my woman. Uh, what do the tattoos mean? Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. They're actually never good examples of their race. He gestures toward the lorryman down the street. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. What the fuck? True, that is a noble cranium, but you got a hard noggin yourself. Oh shit. You sure I'm not craniometrically superior to you? You exhibit forward projection of the jaw, indicative of schizophrenia. 
and sexual inaccountability. From a purely aesthetic standpoint, the dimple in your jaw makes you look like a baby. This is not craniometry. Goddamn. Just an observation. This really is astrology for men. Uh, what else? It is impossible to see any more of your bone structure. It is covered in the ravages of Al Hul. From what remain of your features, I can see fleshy lips, baldness of the head, and long arms relative to lower limbs. Eugenicists are idiots, but this is a lot. It is a lot. This is this is kind of wild. This leads me to conclude you are not a police officer. You are a common criminal, an offspring of murder. Police officer and common criminal, what's the difference? Like Clay and Vesper, and possibly even the degenerate sheep herders of Ubi. Uh huh. So none of one of my ancestors was Sir Laclef and the other Vesper. Your racial heritage is uninteresting. It is the same as all Rivasholians. Your parents and their parents made the decision to reproduce while under the influence of Al Hul. That is the only reason you are here. Huh. He's right there. It's almost impossible to get it on unless you're both drunk. It's too scary when people are sober. Sex is terrifying, dude. I kinda- I wanna punch him. Shit, dude. Suggestion is against it. Fuck! I don't know. But what's your take, Kim? Yes. You've encountered an error. It sure? Wait, what? What error? <laughs> what if I just walk up to it? No, I can't. I apparently encountered a bug. I don't know- I don't know what kind of bug I encountered, but apparently I did. I mean, I don't know what other leads I have to pursue here. I don't know how to get to the apartment. Uh... Because I was thinking, what if I just walk around and do some of my other... Like, quests and stuff, but... Not really much for me to do. So, Bird Nest Roy can be... I can do that. Oh. Oh, this is a really weird scroll bar. Oh, God. What is going on with this? It really doesn't want to go. Okay. I guess we'll slowly scroll down. Barbell, physical instrument. Measure head, conceptualization. Measure head, physical... Okay. Uh, no, I think I'm gonna punch this man. I'm gonna try my best. Here we go. Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You have really let yourself go. Here we go. Here we go. I have the power. All right, don't think it worked. How Ugh. Did this your little fist is in his giant hand, and he's squeezing it. It hurts. I don't think it worked. You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. Say it. I am a degenerate Oh, alcoholic. you can hear the snapping. <laughs> Fuck you. Your fist cracks in his hand like a ripe apple. Pain shoots up into your brain as he's twisting it more and more. The words to the song have changed. Say, oh, I shit. am a violent drunk. I won't fucking say anything. Your hand twists in his grip and the pain blinds you. Oh my Still god. Still the words out of your swollen mouth. Kim, help. Good. Now leave before you humiliate your homo Wait, what? organization any further. Oh, it forced me to say it anyway? Alright, hold on, we have to reload and knock him- knock him out. 
We gotta do it. Gotta, you gotta save scum in, in this scenario. There's nothing else to do. Your race descent has only worsened since Shit. I last saw you. It didn't you work. Really let yourself go. <laughs> How long am I gonna be here trying to save scum this? <laughs> I don't know if I should do this anymore. But like it'll be really funny though. It'll be really funny to see him get knocked Your on his ass by this has only by this man. Oh no. You have really let yourself go. God damn it. God damn it. Okay, statistically, I have a really Your good chance of getting it this time. Alright, well, you know. You have really let yourself go. That was a mulligan, that was a mulligan. It was just practice. Here we go. Your race descent it's time. Has only worsened Fuck. Since the last <laughs> Fuck. You have really let yourself This go. is why they should have done the Fallout New Vegas like you either have the skill or you don't, instead of uh, dice rolling. Because now there's nothing to stop me from just doing this. For every Your skill check in the game. Has only oh, let's go. You. You're done. You have really let yourself go. Oh! Just like that, instinct took over. A sword <gasps> strike straight into his throat, into the cartilage. You could swear you felt the soft panic break. Oh shit! Here we go. Instinct. The man is reeling, gasping for air. Time stands still around you. In the distance, the sounds of the harbor are falling silent. All you hear is a small gurgling sound as a trickle of blood appears on the man. Oh shit. He's open. Rip into him. Right hook. Escalate. <gasps> Get intimate with him. Bring the hurt close. Back up and perform a 360 flying spin kick. We're doing it. Oh, <gasps> it's gonna let me? Oh, he got on. Lands with a dull thump, like a broken down puppet of muscles and sinew. For a moment, he still tries oh, to shit. keep his head up, dazed eyes looking at you with unimaginable surprise. To your left is <gasps> oh the man, disco inferno. Press the button. You slam your fist on the button. The man collapses entirely. Oh his shit! Head rolling to the side. Looks like you're the new measure head now. I don't want to be. I don't want to be the new measure Your head. This is surprisingly calm. No one is the new measure head. Let's go before he gets up. Lieutenant makes haste to the door. Oh, we fucked him up. What's in the box? A buck and ten cents. How's he doing? The man is. How's that L taste? Out. He breathes slowly and steadily. It'll take a few moments for him to recover. How many moments? Let's just go for it. Oh, wait. No, we're, we're fine. I can't believe it. I can believe it. I just saved Scum for like uh, five minutes, but I, I did it. I knocked a man out. Knocked him out. Here we are. Okay, I need to find a place to sleep. Every worker is a member of the board written at the top of the flyers. This is a Dewey typewriter. The nom n model name is on the back, okay? A standard office filing cabinet. The drawers are locked. Someone left the coffee machine on. The dark liquid in the pot looks almost sentient. Oh, shit. Can I open this? On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Let's see what's inside, he thinks. Let's open it. The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Ooh, let's browse, let's do it. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world. From Muindi, Grad, and even... 
Ilmara. Is this the drugs? And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City, La Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. I see. Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Alright, time to the save. slides shut smoothly. Here we go. It's time. The cabinet stands steady as whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. It just says, never mind the note out loud. Look at the note. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. What the fuck? Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweet office floor, more banners. Is this person like a, like an intern? All items on the list have been crossed out and the note itself is crumpled. Look, Kim, a to-do note with a list of errands for Everard. Everard Clare, probably. The head of the Debardos Union. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. What is so special about this, Borscht? Code for drugs? Booze? Blood? Uh, gonna be honest, I have no idea. Take another look at the note. Remember, Leo. Everard's shoes. Special whirling Borscht. Water Everard's okay. all items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. Um, yeah, I don't know. The drawer slides shut smoothly. It's probably fine. A book. We'll read. Let's do a bit of reading. Oh, wait, I can level up. Okay, well, now I want to do another... Another thought cabinet thing. We're doing it. Okay, rigorous self-critique or some kind of superstar. I want to be a superstar. We're doing it. Good shit. I just increase my pain threshold, that's it? Oh no, this is the bonuses I get from my thoughts. Oh my god, most of it is just debuffs. <laughs> oh no. I'm building my character completely incorrectly. What am I doing? Oh, Jesus. I mean, it, it's fine, right? It's fine. It's funny. It gives me unique dialogue sometimes. Thank you, QT, for sending me this photo of you screaming. What's this? The Garden 21, okay. You could hear the cogs whirring, whirring around in my brain for a few seconds there. Magnesium. Just take both of those. Neat office shades. Oh. Well, no, I have the, the sexy glasses, so... I do appreciate it, though. I like it a lot. An imposing <gasps> combination of a punch clock and a payphone. Is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, "Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change." Oh shit. Okay, I'm gonna look at this later. The radio is emitting strange buzzing sounds. What's this? Okay, let's use the phone. Let's let's just see what it does. The already the machine Insert coins. swallows your coin. And seems to be waiting for your next move. Let your muscle memory dial a random number. It's unclear whether you actually have muscle memory. Right now, your finger is just drawing vaguely occult patterns in the air. Might try this again later. Sure, why not? Muscle memory is a tricky thing. Nothing tricky about that. You just do, fail, repeat, until it works. All it takes is motivation and practice. And save scumming. Uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, I have to do the cabinet again. Shit. The file cabinet 
Stand steady. Whatever's hidden here. Uh, look but at the note. Remember all items on the Ever. note. What is so draw? Got the note. Got the note. We're good. There's not carry weight in this, is there? Oh, I hope not. Take the note. Magnesium. Shades. There wasn't actually that much to look at. Okay, that's th this didn't take too long. What's the muscle memory? An imposing. The machine swallows your coin. Your fingers run over the dial pad. Zero, zero, five. That's the dialing code for Revachol. Four, nine, five, two. And a moment of hesitation before entering the final numbers. Nine, nine. Is this, three. is this my wife? Am I calling my wife? Calling. Calling. Still calling. Then. Video Revachol. 24 hour video rental. Oh. Rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy. How may I help you? All right. What is this place? Video Revershall is a 24-hour video rental. We rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lummy. Uh, do you know me? No. No, I meant what is this place to me? Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. Okay, why'd I call you? Continue. Maybe you call to extend your rental period? Do you need to extend your rental period? <laughs> oh god. See, this is why I this is why I took the uh fucking the detective Cousteau thing. Cuz now my name is just Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. Do you have anything on my name? Raphael what? Listen, I can't help you over the phone. If you need further assistance, you can visit us on the corner of Voyager and Main. Are we done? He thinks you're pulling a prank on him. On wow. the corner of Voyager and Main. A large neon sign hangs on the side of a building. Video Revachol, 24 hours. It's raining and there is almost no traffic on the street. A woman's footprints in the mud lead away from the front door. Okay. Tiny heels tiptoeing down the road. Beautiful steps, light-footed with a lifetime ahead of them. You look up and the air seems to grow darker. Uh oh. Suddenly, Not again. you feel like you don't want to hear about video rentals anymore. You don't want to hear about any of it. It was all shit. It's over. Uh. What was all shit? It. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Cam, I feel sad about video Ravishal 24 hours. That's enough for you today. Let's conclude this call. Wait, what? Another new thought? No? I didn't see what that was. Oh, it might have been that I leveled up. Okay. Oh, uh, we're done. Hang up the phone. Oh, thought complete. White morning. This is what I got from that weird part where I almost died. And the little guy gets smaller and smaller as you rise above the dollhouse world. You see him out in the snow, on the streets, in the shop on the corner, and finally in a matchbox house. Sitting by the window, white flowers on the windowsill. You can smell them from up here, it's awful. A white morning. A modern death. Divorce, or something similar. All you can do now is put more distance between you and him, make him smaller, make him less you. Ah, plus 20% zoom out distance. All Motorix learning caps raised by one. Is this like, breaking the fourth wall? Huh. Got it. Well, okay. Neat. And I have a level, what should I spend it on? I kind of want to just get more <laughs> slots for thoughts. Inexplicable fem feminist agenda is a really, really funny thought, uh, thought cabinet name, and I really want to try and get it. Inexplicable Feminist Agenda. Volumetric Shit Compressor. Torque Dork. Cop of the Apocalypse. Indirect Modes of Taxation. <laughs> These are fucking great. Apricot Chewing Gum Scented 1. Overprotective Honor Glands. Finger Pistols. <laughs> 9mm. Is the feminist agenda the intent of, or intend, 
of female doms. It could be. Magnesium-based life form. <laughs> Bringing of the law. Law jaw. Advanced race theory. Oh no, you could just be racist. <laughs> Opioid receptor antagonist. Date of birth generator. Homosexual underground. These are really good names. <laughs> God damn it. Okay. I want to get all of these and just use them all. I shouldn't be though, right? <laughs> I need to put points into these. Does it matter? I don't even know. Fuck it, I'm unlocking another thought. Uh... Rigorous self-critique. Or no, become superstar. Okay, no, I already had this. Okay. I, I reloaded a save at some point before I started researching that. It's fine. This is what's happening now. Hangs immediately on yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I can zoom out more. That's, that's good, I guess. I still need a place to sleep for the night. What do we got here? A coat? Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. Oh, is this mine? The white rectangle of the Revachol Citizens Militia is clearly visible on its back. This is your cloak. You can feel it. Lieutenant, I think that's mine. Yes, it does bear the RCM insignia. And we are the only detectives in Martinez. You think I should get it? The service cloak issued to you by your station? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> God damn it. Grab the coat, As your cloak, fingers leave. touch the tarpaulin, it almost feels like the cloak wants to deliver a message of comfort through your fingers. It's mine now. It is mine now. I will shield you from the elements and give my life for yours. That's what the cloak is relaying. Fuck yeah, dude. Yo, it's cop time, dude. It's cop time. Put her on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got my RCM cloak. I got my fucking white tank top. My his stain covered necktie. My bell bottoms. My my wacky shoes. Yellow gloves. Boombox. Wrench. Sexy frog visor. Sexy red glasses. Oh, man. I'm not wearing that. Take that off. Good shit. Oh yeah, I have this to uh, look the at. The front of this quarterly journal features a large satirical portrait of the late King Frieza. From the sides of his head, a pair of white antlers spread to the corners of the cover. Why antlers? Because white antlers are one of the symbols of communism. They represent a society in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it. A shameful way to treat a former king. Even one as underwhelming as Frisell. Why Frisell? Because Frisell was incompetent, foolish, and cruel. In short, the embodiment of everything the communards wished to overthrow. It's satire, you see. Oh. Look through the pages, see what catches your eye. To your disappointment, there aren't any full color pictures to direct your attention. Aww. Just column after column of closely set text, interrupted occasionally by little doodles in black and white. After rifling the pages with your thumb several times, you return to the table of contents. The magazine is divided into several sections. International development. Kunst und Kultur. And uh -huh. local concerns. <laughs> Just inside the I cover, love the little pause before the enunciation there. Let's read the editor's note. Comrade, as you know, this journal takes its name from Mazov's immortal expression, Du Cristal a la Fume. This was his way of describing the way the rigid, crystalline structures of capitalist ideology turned to smoke under communism. Right. But, like the structures of capitalist ideology, we too are at risk of going a la Fume. Unlike many publications which are content to spoon-feed their readers reassuring drivel, La Fume is committed to telling the radical truth. 
even when that truth may drive away potential subscribers. Oh shit, dude. So please, if you value our radical Mazovian perspective, <laughs> communist magazine, politics, culture, and international affairs, please consider subscribing today. Yours in struggle, the editors. <gasps> Either whisper or play it cool. Kim, I think this is a communist magazine. What do you expect? It was laying around the office of the Debarders Union. They're probably bankrolling the thing. No, uh, you know. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. I want to catch up on international developments. I need the lore. This section includes a long, the tedious critique of the latest round of free trade negotiations between the EPIS nations and the free state of Seminine. Okay. You also skip over an article about heavy fuel oil smuggling along the Mes Messina border. Something about bear wrestling in Samara. I want to read about the bear wrestling. You go, Grad. What is this Discord notif on my phone? What is this? Go away. There we go. Face it. You really aren't interested in. I want to read affairs. the bear wrestling. You're not what the even frick? Sure, where most of these countries are. Uh, right. I was all tabbed for a sec. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. What is Kunst and Kultur? It takes a moment, but gradually it dawns. I'm sure I pronounced that, that completely correctly. Kunst und Kultur must mean arts and culture. As you leaf through this section, you come across several reviews of recent radio. Oh, plays, my throat! I'm getting well that feeling in my throat where it's like you know you're getting sick. A local artist. Oh man! Only as CS. It takes me like a month to get over to get over congestive like throat colds. I hate them. The main feature though is a long essay titled Tip Top Tourne, a critical Mazovian perspective. Mmm What is this tip top tourne? The actual article is surprisingly light on details, but after skimming a page or two, you gather that it has something to do with motor carriage racing. If you don't oh. follow it, you only ever hear about the ludicrous sponsorships and obscene death toll. Obscene death toll. Let's see what these communists have to say about Tip Top. You think you're settling in for a relaxing recap of the most recent season, maybe sprinkled with some nice anecdotes about a few of the more colorful drivers. Instead, you find yourself skimming a 10,000 word feature about oh my all God. the politically problematic aspects of Tip Top Tourney. Wait, what's wrong with Tip Top? Where to even start? For one, there's the crass commercialism of its sponsorships. And then there's the practically criminal emphasis on deadly motor crashes. Uh-huh. <laughs> what's wrong with a good motor crash? They just keep it interesting, yeah. And that precisely is what's problematic about it. Were it not for the promise of random, spectacular violence, Audiences would quickly lose interest. But that's the best part. At the end of the day, it's the destruction of these 750,000 real races that you're really watching for. Wow, you're right. I really am just in it for the violence. You see? <laughs> Fuck. One cannot avoid the conclusion that Tip Top Tourney is simply the apotheosis of spectacular entertainment under capitalism. Yeah, I guess that's fair. <laughs> Did you know Tip Top Tourne is actually an org orgi orgiastic ritual of capitalistic destruction? I had no idea. I can safely say the thought had never crossed my mind, Detective. Lieutenant furrows his brow. Wonder what else is really just a metaphor for life under capitalism. I'm sure most things are, if the young men who wrote this article are to be believed. <laughs> God damn if it. If I had to wager, I'd say they've never even seen the inside of a motor, much less a motor race. I take whatever they write with a large grain of salt. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds. I love how many I love how many digs this game makes at every single ideology ever. Uh let's see what they mean by local concerns. Not surprisingly, much of this section is taken up with articles declaring unqualified support for the dock workers' strike. Uh-huh. You skim the headlines. Paint the whole oh, breakthrough red and white. Martinez tames the wild pines. A city in revolt. First, we take Martinez. 
Then we take La Delta. Right, but hold on. Uh, breakthrough imminent? Where? Why, why can't I see it? I guess I have to finish this thing up first? Finally, there's a brief article by the writer, G. Martin, accusing the owner of the Capeside Apartments of illegally attempting to evict certain communist tenants simply for not having paid their rent. Charging rent just to live somewhere is pretty outrageous, it's true. Wouldn't it be better for everyone if labor and capital could reach some reasonable accommodation? Why should I care? Charging rent just to live somewhere is outrageous. The writer G. Martin remarks dryly that capitalists love wealth redistribution, so long as it's only redistributed upward. That's true, actually. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. Uh, I guess that's it. Put it away. Right. Now can I use this? Here we go. Detective Cousteau. Yes. Monsieur Cousteau, the reward for coming up with your classy new name has arrived. What are the attributes Detective Cousteau should gain in? Obviously, savoir-faire and esprit de corps. You know exactly what they do and what those words mean. They're refined, like you. You have a ton of that fancy stuff. And if the world can't accept Raphael Ambrosius is your name, you will always be Detective Cousteau to yourself. R. A. Cousteau. Hell yeah, dude. Sophisticated culture detective. I am him. In ancient things Raphael Ambrosius art. Cousteau is my persona. Wait, what bonuses does this give me? Here we go. Okay, so you lose... Okay, so... While you're researching this, you lose stats and then you gain them when you... Okay, got it. Good. <laughs> yup, fancy. Let's have this one, too. God damn it. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Okay. Good shit. I assume you can stop and then resume it, or does stopping it just completely reverse the research? I don't know. Interestingly, though, the the dialogue is voiced when you unlock, like, all of these other ones, but then for White Morning specifically, it wasn't voiced. So I think this is meant to be meta. Like, this is me, the player, not... Not him. Got it. Okay. Or maybe I'm just reading way too much into it. Uh, how do I get on the roof? I want to get on the roof. Do I have a way up? Yeah, I clicked on the thing and it isn't putting me toward it, so... What's this? Collecting rainwater. Uh, one sec. I'm just all tabbed. Uh, right... Right, alright, okay. Can I go over here? No, this isn't... I thought this was like a walkway. Never mind. Let's go down here. Oh, wait, there was a... All around you, great machines in Cuisins. I'm sure I pronounced that right. Absolutely, I did. What's this? A composite eye of halogen lights watch it, watches you, emitting a low buzz. Why is it auto-saving? White pine trees are printed onto the, the screen covering. Looks like a forest under snow. Okay. There's a lot of stuff here. Wonder if, uh... I wonder if that man is still... Uh, a lying down. Panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Mush and Aret are faded with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Marsh. On. Arrête. Off. I'll fuck with this later. What's this? I don't wanna- I don't wanna do anything I'll regret. Money! I love money. You see faded industrial lettering on the platform. Balsund. Okay. I wanna fuck with the button. 
I want to see what it does. I want to push the funny button. Let me down. Okay, we're saving before we do this. Okay, here we go. It's button time. A rusting marsh. Oh. With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Uh huh. Oh look, I get to see what's inside, right? Here we go. It's it, it's going. And with a surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. This crane was built with a purpose, which has now been fulfilled. To move this container. What's inside the container? You can say. All you know is, it's special. Maybe it's drugs. I can't see how that was worth the wreckers. Except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. Oh, thanks, Kim. Do you have anything new to say? Yes. No. Okay. Only got an hour left before the game's gonna want me to go back to the... The... The bar, I think. Before you stands a cargo container just one of many in the yard lieutenant i think there's something special about this container <sighs> is this like your thing with that wall again maybe i can't tell i think we should investigate further you do because i don't wait why not there are a million containers here why are you fixating on this one uh maybe there's some contraband in there there may very well be but we are not here to look for that we are not here to interact with containers we are here to talk to the Union, right? Knock on the door. No reply. Open the door. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. Just just kick down the door, it's easy, to I'm a cop. Left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. Erratic yet thorough. Been in the world for two days. Icosahedral dice set sirens. Oh yeah. Forgot I had those. Persuade the door to open. I'm sure this will work. Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? Because getting physical wasn't an option. Because what wasn't an option? Oh shit, <laughs> These, I'm talking to myself. Out loud, using my body over my wits. Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. Nothing more to do here for now. Okay. I mean... Maybe. Oh, should I accidentally open the... Oh, interesting. That doesn't show an OBS. The, the steam overlay. Oh, what's this? The shipyard's oddly quiet. The great machines are sleeping. Um... Was there anything else over here? I don't think so. Let's see what's going on here. The speaker tower is silent. There's no work to organize in the yard below. Oh, yeah, that's fair. <gasps> Box! The musk of oil and rust comes from the chasm in front of you. Smells like blood. Uh-oh. Got some gloves. What do these gloves give me? Interfacing. I'll keep these on. I like how they look. What's this? Industrial-sized thermos. Smells like burnt coffee. Get some free money. Some cups. Who's this? Container, container, container. Container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. Didn't I hear about someone named Leo? That was on the note, right? The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice. He's Ubi. From the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Moindi. Uh huh. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Tiny man is so engaged in his work he does not notice you. Do not interrupt the little man in his joyous activity. Now we'll interrupt him. Hi. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Aww. 
kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? A shadow passes over his kind face. What is it with you people and the scabs? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. You're Ubi, right? Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say huh. us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. Love this man. I love this man. What are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. Uh, he waves at the containers towering behind him. What's going on here? Look at the mountains of containers rising behind him. Why do I have a minus two in logic? Oh. Bonus from items minus one. Some kind of superstar minus two. Oh, and you can't unequip items mid mid convo. Why not? Everything is so pretty and red. You and Leo look like brothers as you glance around with similar childlike one. Oh my god. Red is so much prettier than drab old green. Sure is, mister. Sure is. Really livens up the place. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I had to break this bonding moment. But the red containers mean they are replacing the company livery with the union livery. Which means this strike isn't gonna stop anytime soon. Oh, hey, hey, Kim did it for me, you know? That's why I got him with me. He's the, he's the brains, I'm the brawn. Where's everyone? The harbor's empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates. Keeping the scabs from coming in. He leans in with a confidential look. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. Huh. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Ebrar is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. I think that was, uh... The racist man? But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. He stops, but seems eager to tell you more. Uh, Titus was the guy inside of the bar, right. What a trouble did they get into? Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Oh, he's about to spill the beans about the murder, isn't he? He smiles and leans closer. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling him to take some time off. Don't go all bad cop on this simple, friendly fellow. Uh, but what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. Well, that's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's huh. keep this on the hearties. He looks to you for assistance. Uh, too rowdy? Leo, what kind of fight did they get into? Did they kill a mercenary? <laughs> I kinda... I kinda wanna just ask him about the fight he got into in middle school. Now let's do one. Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving, and the words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look, even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who... No. He already switched to oh, a no. fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. That's rough. Okay, do you work here? Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. The little man raises his hand in a welcoming gesture. I love him. I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town. And Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Ebrar is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> oh my god, I love Who him. Is this, Miss 
Lieutenant looks up at Leo. A real pretty lady with a skin like those Dewe Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. They're my real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down beside the radio. Aww. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Stay on this Miss Beaufort topic. Huh. Who's this Miss Beaufort you mentioned? Oh, Lizzie. She is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. Uh-huh. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, there's sadness in his eyes. Oh, shit. What's wrong, Leo? If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Oh, well. Dr. Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years, she has. He sighs and falls silent, watching you meekly with his blue, blue eyes. Uh, I think you're doing a great job, Leo. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. The lieutenant smiles at the little man. Aww. This is the first time Kim's openly smiled. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. You didn't think it was possible, but the smile becomes even wider. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are alright. Oh, he's, we're, he, he's gonna snitch. The white rectangle on your clothes might not mean an awful lot in Martinez, but the recognition from an authority figure made Leo's day. Are you Leo, the one who wrote the note to make some banners? Oh yes, yes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. What was that about the borscht? Oh yes, I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> it's very, very good. Makes a man <clears throat> feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadan's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. Power borscht, huh? Never heard of a borscht that turns little guys into dog fighters. Alcohol, however. Hmm. Wait, what's this? Did I forget to check this earlier? Breakthrough imminent. Huh. Or no, is it... Okay, no, I didn't unlock a new thought. Huh, okay. What do you men mean by taking the soup to the men? Is it for striking? Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. Oh, is that what the guy in the kitchen was doing? Who makes it at the whirling? Oh, the whirling's cook. He makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manana in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grad. Looks like the borscht is spiked. I'm gonna look into it. Um... Sure. Oh, sure, mister. Sure. You do that. Yes, sir. Uh, what's in the container over there? Point to the container suspended from the crane arm. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Tell you. I see. I'm looking for the leader of the dock workers' union. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. He coughs and continues immediately. Guys like Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. See, aren't they leaders of a crime syndicate, though? Patience. Deep down, you have the mental power to keep listening. Not many would, but you do. Do not interrupt Leonard. Had an arithmetics teacher, Miss Bellows. <laughs> Her real name was Miss Bellows. She was a real pretty lady, but when she got mad... <laughs> I don't even remember the names of most of my teachers. All the boys liked her, if you know what I mean, mister. We used to sneak uh -huh. in our yard in the dark and peek through the window. One time we saw Miss Bellows with a fellow. Yes, we did. Yes, we did, mister. He looks for signs of disbelief in your eyes. No, you fucking didn't. 
<laughs> sure. Yes, we did. We did, mister. Indeed we did. Him was a big, big fellow. He used to drive the Troika near houses, school and everything. Them was all naked too. That's all I got to say about that. Oh, shit. Very interesting, very interesting. Thank you for telling me the whole thing. Thank you. Eh, almost forgot. Mr. Everard is usually in that container over there. But he usually leaves around 10 p.m. So you gotta be quick if you wanna catch him. Oh, shit. Well, it's almost 10 p.m. now. Bye now. Oh, here we go. Some kind of superstar. They say the world isn't ready for a rock and roll cop. No one wants their state monopoly on violence to be mixed with celebrity worship. They claim to know it would be dangerous for detectives to rise to the ranks of demigods and have sexual encounters with barely legal cover girls. It would be insane, they say. To all this, you say, fuck off and die. <laughs> you people have no idea how good these cops are gonna get. They're gonna crack 20 cases a day. In the future, cops will be like astrophysicists or prime ministers or prophets. And you're the first one. Hell yeah, dude. Minus one logic, price of self-delusion. Learning cap for visual calculus raised to six. Okay, and suggestion, electrochemistry and composure. Okay. I see. The special borscht. What's so special about the borscht the strikers are eating? The cook is making it, and you can find him in the kitchen. Look into it. Okay. The banner sags under the weight of the rain and snow. White waves on red. Oh, hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They could only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. Uh-huh. I had some questions for you if it's not too much trouble. No trouble at all, mister. Right. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, wisdom withers if not shared. And old Leo is always up for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Let me save. I have to go talk to Everard. Everard Claire. Here we go. Uh. What is this? The coffee in the giant thermoses is still lukewarm. Oh, I really want coffee now. Oh, I could really use some coffee. It's fine. I'm not gonna get up midstream and get coffee. You're a very large man. Is it fish? A taxidermy fish that tells time. Okay. Before you is a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. Oh, he's just fucking vibing. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. A typical power play. Wait for him to speak first. Show him you've got a backbone. Say nothing, look him dead in the eye. The one good eye of this man fills you up without even flickering. The other, his lazy eye, is constantly moving like a goldfish in a tank. Oh, shit. Sure. Grotesquely magnified by his plus six glasses. For a moment, you don't know where to look. It is unbearably humid in the trailer. Beads of sweat slide down the man's forehead. Oh no. Oh, he's, he's, he's in his fucking gamer chair, dude. Yet, he's unperturbed, holding his own. Keep staring. At first, nothing happens. His face wears a wide and self-satisfied smile. Every now and then, he smacks his big lips. Like a general over his maps, he plots his moves. Judging by the way he's licking his chops, it's going to be a good one. Oh boy. Sam. Oh, there we go. I broke him. He begins to speak, albeit very slowly, purposefully leaving a pause after his opener. Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi, how nice that you found a moment to pay a visit to the Debardeurs Union. I'm Everard Clare, head of this little operation here. He knows my last name? I mean, he got it wrong. It's Cousteau, but... Please, have a seat. He gestures to a tiny folding chair opposite to his giant desk. The folding chair looks like a torture device. Extremely uncomfortable. You go ahead, detective. Lieutenant nods to you, then at the chair. Whatever he has in store for you, 
It can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. Uh-huh. He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. <laughs> you could just leave. I don't sit. It's kind of my thing. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. As he nods, his multiple chins move like ocean waves. I, too, have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Oh, he's like a he's like a baby, he's like a child. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. But until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. He turns back to his typewriter. You just you have to sit. Don't give up, but don't leave either. You're going to have this conversation on your terms. You just need to remain headstrong. Remain standing and don't go anywhere. Everard. Starts whistling a little worker song. He really is trying to ignore you. Or will you out of existence. Stand strong. The lieutenant stands right next to you, not showing any signs of impatience or boredom. I see you are an extremely stubborn man, Mr. Dubois. That ain't necessarily a bad thing. Finally, the big man looks you in the eye and speaks. Oh, we win. We you won. Did it. This might help against whatever comes next. So tell me, how can the head Holy of the shit, Bardas it. Union help a representative of the Rebishal Citizens Militia today? Oh, uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. Lawrence Gart? Oh, is that the... Is that the... the... manager guy? This should take care of that nonsense. He points to a giant novelty check on his desk. It's absolutely comically huge. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. He points at it again. I already paid my, 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 my shit. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Uh, you know Gart? Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. Oh shit, you can take that comically large check and shove it up your ass. Oh man. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> hey dog, can I get some real? Only a check full. Fuck. Uh I'm good. I don't I don't I don't wanna have I don't want to have taking money from this man on my psyche. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Okay, well, I, I didn't say no handouts. I just wanted more, you know? I just wanted more money. Oh, wait, one sec. I was just reloading my page here. Yeah, that's interesting. It still isn't isn't showing me what my bitrate is on uh, on the browser. That's fine. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, union people are on it as we speak. Oh, shit. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug How does he know about all, all the shit? But all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. Huh. The world is swallowed oh, no. by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. How do you know I lost my gun? I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's going to be all right. Okay, yes, his name is Harry Dubois. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I oh my god. Know. I have a feeling everything's going to be alright. <laughs> he knows everything. He does know everything. Fuck. Don't panic. God. I'm panicking. You're Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry. 
No, I'm no. You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. No, I'm not about to cry. Just try to stay cool. Mr. Devoir, you don't oh, I'm about so to cry cool. right in front of this man. What is this, Mr. Dubois? He keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. I'm chill, I'm chill, I'm fine. Mr. Dubois. Mr. Dubois. Harry. The large man snaps his fingers, but to no effect, you're in some stupor. There are no Harrys. Let your mind go to your safe place. While Everard is distracted by your odd behavior, the lieutenant's eyes are mapping everything around you. The folder, desk, papers on the wall. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow. Oh, shit. In a kind of throw-in motion. Like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. I'm as good as it gets, Mr. Dubois. Vaguely gesture with your hands. Oh, yeah, man. I'm fucking great. Keep wobbling. Uh... <laughs> I'm as good as it gets, Mr. Dubois. Vaguely gesture with your hands above your head. Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition is not terminal. What an odd demonstration of... Uh, you got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy So, man, we're at 10pm sure now. Is he just gonna get up and leave? Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. Yeah, dude, let's it do it. It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. Let's just get right into it. I'm told the union is involved in the local drug trade. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? No comment. Harry, you wound me, Harry, in the heart. But I trust you to put this to bed. Do what you must, and let's change the subject, shall we? Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. How does he... What... Why is he acting like he knows us? It, the, like what? Does Kim know him? None taken. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? Okay, so my name is actually just Harry. Got it. Um, I've just finished investigating the local drug trade. Have I though? Aren't you gonna ask me how I got in? Am I going to ask? Hell, Harry. You spin kicked my strongest Fuck. man in the face. I saw it from my window. Can he really see from here? I guess we're not that far off. Would you ask a man like that how he got into your container yard? I understand. I am a terrifying death machine. Or you don't have a window. It was a figure of speech, Harry. Of course I don't have a window. I'm in a container. You know. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. You called me Mr. Dubois, why? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. So that's really my name. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? Uh, you know. I think the odds of that are very low. Um... My memory's fine, I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out. With my big fat folder. Well, you know, maybe I want to take a look at it just to, you know, confirm <laughs> confirm that it's right, you know. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Uh, Lieutenant inspects Everard over his spectacles. Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Damn. What about your big fat folder? I, uh, it's, it's looking pretty fat. It's looking pretty thick. Asking too many questions will make you look weak. You should maybe focus on the folder. 
Oh, shit. Let me get this straight. What is my full name? It's Harry. Harry Dubois. That's what you call your penis. Your, just your big, fat folder. I can't think of a worse name for your penis. You gotta get a better name, man. You feel like a Dubois, but you don't feel like a Harry. Strange. He doesn't look like a Harry. I'd say he looks more like a Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. You don't feel like any of these things. You know what your name is. You have a sophisticated name, like that of a count. That's not or my name. My name is Raphael Cousteau. Fine, Harry. You can even be Harry Raphael Dubois de Costo, or whatever you choose to be. You go back to your original, Godzilla. That's better. <sighs> Lieutenant covers his face and sighs audibly. Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. Do you know where I live? But of course, Harry. Your precinct is the 41st and you live in Jamrock. You're a Jamrock boy. A long way from home, but that's okay. Is Was the voice actor, like, plugging his nose when he was uh, saying his lines? Your balls are Fred and Ethel. God fucking damn it. <laughs> uh, you know anything about my family? Do I have a wife or a kids or... Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? Uh, I think I do. I'd be a wonderful father. Well, yes. I'm sure you're gonna make one little boy or a girl very happy and proud one day, Harry. Hell yeah. Your penis is called look Little Ricky. How many penis names do you have? You're making all these jokes, and you don't think I get the reference. That's because you're right, I don't get the reference. What kind of cop does it say I am? Harry, you're not simply a cop, you're a star. A I know you're referencing something, I just don't know what you're referencing. Sky, outshining all other stars. You're a superstar. Oh shit. That's what I like about you, Everard. You get me. Of course I do, Harry. And I'm gonna Oh, <gasps> I got an shine. achievement for that. I'm gonna put you on all the big stages. Your name in giant neon letters. Harry Dubois. I got an achievement called Hyperstar Law Official or something. I didn't I didn't see the whole name. I love Lucy. Fred and Ethel were their married friends, and little Ricky was their son. I see. No, yeah, I don't- I don't watch- I don't do anything in my free time, I just stare at a wall. So I don't really know that much about media references. The giant neon sign reading, Harry Dubois, hanging from the Kvalsun crane, can be seen all the way to Jamrock. Huh. Somewhere in Mirova. A beautiful woman sees the bright glow on the horizon and says to herself, Oh my god, I shouldn't have left him. Oh shit, where'd you get that folder? Ah, this? My friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. Damn, okay. Have another look at that folder. Kim suspects something, and you've read shipping folders before. Everard's large Fuck. hands are covering the folder, but the look on his face says, I know everything about you, Harry. I've got nothing to hide. Oh, Harry. Oh, wow. This is really something. I'm sure it's not that bad. At worst, he has an old RCM folder, and I very much doubt even that. Hmm. So how about it, Harry? You need assistance, I presume? Let's talk of other matters for a moment. Of course, Harry, of course. Let's not linger on personal details and amnesia. You wanted something from me. Oh. Uh, Let's hear it, Harry. Of right. course, Harry. Let's talk course. about my lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Mm -hmm. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. I mean, I don't need my gun. I got I I can fucking 360 spin kick a man in the skull and and you know, it's fine. Mm. 
The gun may have been bought from Roy's pawn shop. Have your men factored that in? Yes. Thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed factored in that you pawned it. Uh-huh. Now, please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry. Relax. I have great guys on this. You focus on what's important. Building our relationship for the good of Martin Ains. It did not come as a surprise to him. He might actually not be bullshitting. Huh. I will not be blackmailed with this gun business. Harry, Harry. I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. Well, that's fine. Who cares? I assure you we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. The lieutenant is concerned about the lost gun and feels that the fact you haven't prioritized looking for it is unfortunate, if inevitable, and doesn't put the RCM in a good light. I got these fucking pythons, dude. I, ain't, I don't need a gun. Excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun finding competition on our hands. I want to talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martin Ains. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help like I'm helping you with your lost gun. Uh-huh. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. I sense there's a but. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Uh-huh. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. Kim, is that true? Are we door opening machines? I gotta ask Kim, dude. I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and oh, leave boy. It unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. Does this jiggling ooze <laughs> jiggling think he's ooze going to use you? He's got another thing coming. Play his game, son. With your eyes peeled. He's going to slip up, and when he does, you're going to come out on top. Nothing shady here at all. Of course not. It's just a little door. Uh, why don't you open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. Uh, if he's right, I have been. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi. And therefore, I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean by weasel? A loud blabbering What do you mean weasel. by that? When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. He removes his glasses and rubs his nose. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. I bet you don't even know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martin A's. Hmm. What if I just didn't? Or I could, I could accept it and then just not do it. Damn it, fine, I'll look into it. We need to talk about the murder. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. He flicks his fingers. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Uh-huh. I'm looking into your shady brew. I don't know what that means, Harry. Shady brew? There are so many moving parts in my operation, I can't keep track of them all. You know what? Don't even tell me. Whatever it is, do it. Surprise me. 
just one thing. If you can, make it even shadier. I see. I, I don't, I don't want to lose to this man. I met Joyce, the company representative. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Mmm, are they though? Just pals? We're all trying to do what's best for Martin Eight. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you find your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. Whoa, that's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. Mmm. Oh yeah, Mr. Gomond. What happened to the previous negotiator, Mr. Gomond? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He made concessions for the company in previous negotiations. Why would you let an ally like that go? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. You called him a midget. Harry! I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only uh -huh. kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. It's hard to say if he really lost his temper, or if this is another one of his tricks. This man almost never angers visibly. That's true. Aw, oh, jeez. The previous union leader vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Uh-huh. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Joyce seems to think the union's lowballing her. Yes, yes. Lowballing, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. Uh, why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad wow. negotiator. Wow, I see how it is. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. Be sure? I find it a little odd. I'm just a nice guy, Harry. I wouldn't be where I am now if I wasn't nice. Politics is all about emotions, and I want you to have positive emotions when you think of me. Okay, then. Positive emotions it is. Hell yeah, dude. You I like love positive emotions. emotions. Let's talk about something else. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember... None of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. Ryan. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. She's gonna be like dead or some shit. This is weird. Not nice weird, but okay. What's in the container outside your office? My dear Harry. There are literally millions of containers in this harbor. I couldn't possibly remember what's in all of them. There's something special about it. It was attached to the Kvalsen crane. Harry, you smooth-talking son of a bitch. Time is a precious resource, and I don't have enough of it to count containers with you. Smooth-talking. Maybe that's the way to go about opening the container. God damn it. You should at least try convincing it. I wasn't able to convince it to open. I don't think that's a thing I can do, unless I save scum. Uh... I've finished investigating the local drug trade. Ah, uh, yes. Your side investigation. Thank you. You've got some spirit clearing up phony drug accusations alongside this murder. I'll talk to the mayor and see if I can get you the key to the city, Harry. Now let's talk real business. Not even a speck of anger in his voice. That's that, then. Okay. I'm gonna go now, but we might talk again later. Leave. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Thanks, I was wondering how I'm supposed to get out. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Huh. 
So open apartment door for Everard. Oh, God damn it. I don't want to do that. Yes. I guess I gotta. I guess we're leaving. Oh, you have to go all around that thing. Okay. I keep forgetting I just have this boom box right on my shoulder playing this whole time. Oh, hey, mister. I need sure, mister. Uh, Absolutely. Right. Oh, hey, mister. I'm not gonna bother you with a long greeting. Just like yeah, yeah. I guess we have to go back to the 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 hotel then. Yeah, why not? I didn't really get much done today, did I? Oh wait, go down here. Well, I mean, I don't know. I met Everard Clara, but I don't feel any closer to solving the murder, really. I do need to talk to the... Titus was his name, and all the other guys, but... Oh yeah, and there's everything that's back here. What's back here? What happens if you don't get back to the hotel before the day ends? Three packs worth of cigarette butts? Numerous empty bottles of Commodore Red and Potent Pil Pilsner. This is the Night Watchman's booth. The name on the door reads... Rene Arno. Oh, Rene. This is where Rene works. I'm gonna look around, search the booth. If you must. But please, hurry. We are pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean, and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Yo, take it. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Rene, is dressed in a Royal Carabiner uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. She is smiling playfully at the camera. Rene looks like he's about to smile. This photo must be tied to some good memories. Aww. Why did you take that picture of Rene? Uh... I'm gonna ask him about it. You're really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure. As long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. Got it. Wait, I should save. I haven't saved in a while. Right. Uh, I can't go down there. Snow is quietly covering the numerous wine bottles and cigarettes oh, shit. on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. Did I do this? Well, yes. I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. Huh. This is really sad. I must have been miserable. Yes. This scene isn't exactly ripping with joy. Let's just move on. I assume I could have gotten a thought there if I said that it was a good thing. That I got absolutely wasted. Okay. I don't think I can go down there yet. Yeah, I guess we have to head back. I don't- I don't know how to get around down there. Uh... Go down here... Wait, what's this, Rene, about the photo? Bunch of items. Right, okay. Time to head down. That guy's gone. Ooh, How do I get back down? There we go. Yeah, I gotta get back to the hotel. It's way too late. I haven't even gotten there yet. So much stuff to get done. And I have to pay the guy the room fee, 25 real, I think. Let's talk to this guy. You again. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Titus does not look particularly happy to see you. I talked to Joyce, the Merc you hanged. His friends are coming for you. Yeah, my friends. You mean his squad mates from Cronell. Wouldn't want to peed up his grandma. The snicker in the in the room. Some of the men put their beers down. Nervous snickering. There's a rush of adrenaline present. Uh, they're forming some kind of tribunal and they're coming for you. This is what happens if you take the law into your own hands. Other people start doing it, too. Let them come. The hardy boys are right fucking here. You heard the man. Right here. We're armed. We got the whole district behind us. Oh, and shit. Glenn. Glenn is fucking crazy. Who's Glenn? Yeah. 
Oh, well this guy. Oiled, not the machine. He punches Blondie on the shoulder. The mood is on the rise. They're feeling confident. Ready to punch out the whole Merc platoon. The mercenaries are armed with automatic weapons. We got weapons of our own. We got Esther 50s, Zilagars. Glenn's got a knock cannon at home. Will they pierce ceramic armor? I guess we're gonna see. Aren't we? See what? That they don't? <laughs> oh, get fucked. Yeah. Like you've been up against ceramic armor. He takes a sip of beer to bide his time, then tries to get the last word in. You haven't even seen the whole suit, right? I've seen the whole fucking thing, and it didn't make him immortal. This Cronell is bad news, you know that, right? <laughs> so are the local gangs. The fucking Barmy army and the Madre scum. You've been out there. Seen any around? Yeah. Where are they now, huh? Send back to Madre in an airtight cargo crate. Uh -huh. These people are trained military professionals with decades of combat experience. They are not a gang or a Barmy army. No, they're not. They're uncoordinated and drunk. We know more about them. Is that true, though? Think. Joyce says they've gone rogue. Nobody's controlling them. Big fucking surprise. They hire psycho scum, arm them to the teeth, and let them loose in the city. What do you think is gonna happen? Uh, okay. What do you mean, okay? Uh... I mean, okay, they're gonna wipe you the fuck out, Titus. No, they won't. Get out of here with your negative energy. Uh-huh. He really doesn't like you ruffling their feathers like that on what might be the eve of battle. All he means is that the situation is serious. No wonder you cops get shot to shit every day. Can't go to war with an attitude like that. Uh-huh. I'm gonna take off now. I don't know if it was a good idea to rile, rile them up like that, but, you know. I've got nothing to say to you. Okay, there's nothing new with you. I should probably give you the money. Can I help you? Got my bill for tonight. For 20 real. Oh, come on, man. It's late. Do I really have to pay you again? The breath catches in his chest. The light in his eyes snuffs out all at once. After a moment, he speaks. Do you have money tonight? Yes, I do. Well, you really don't need a free room. Do you? He shakes his head and stops as a strange new cruel light rekindles in his features. But you know what? You're in luck because you don't have to ever pay me again. You're fucking with me, aren't you? Oh no. Not at all, officer. It's true. You don't have to pay me anything. You don't have to give me any money at all. If you want a room, yes, you'll need to pay me. But you don't have to just give me money. Giving me money for a room is wow. your choice. I see how it is. This isn't a fucking joke. Wait, I still don't understand. Do I get a free room or not? No. You can choose to give me 20 real for a room, or you can choose not to. I don't care what you decide. This isn't a choice. I have nowhere else to go. You want a free place to sleep? Fine. You've already unlocked your new room. The trash container outside is ready and waiting. Oh shit, he owned me. The lieutenant is painfully silent. This was your responsibility. I cannot help you now. I am sorry. The time is now. Hobo Hobo Cop! Hobo Cop! Come, a new dimension of reality will open. A portal is this bed of waste. Sleep there and awaken elsewhere. What does that mean? It is not clear. All that is known is sleep in the trash, and there is no coming back. Wait, you want me to sleep in the trash outside? I don't care what you do. Sleep in the trash or pay for a room. I don't care anymore. I'll see what I can do. You do that. If you can pay another 20 real, I'll give you the room again. If not, the garbage is yours, free of charge. Now, is there anything you wanted? Oh, goodbye, leave. Hold on. I want to save and actually see what happens if I sleep in the trash. Will the game let me? Because I, I will do it if I can. Got the 20 real? Then Not why yet. Then are you wasting- Okay, hold on. Can I actually go sleep in the trash? Is this a thing the game will let me do? Oh, come on. I really want to do it. I really want to do it. Hold on. Uh, Hobo Cop. 
Reveal special collector's edition Tari bottles on the map. Okay. And it doesn't say a bonus about sleeping in the trash. I really want to do it though. Please let me. Why are you still out right now? Okay. Nope. Please let me. The trash can take the smell of rotten come on, food come on, come on. You. you see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. Hop in. Time for bed, hobo cop, crawl inside. The smell of rotten food <gasps> rises up at you. Yes! You inside <laughs> the trash container. It's time. The lieutenant averts his eyes <laughs> as you crawl into Yo, Kim, hop the trash in. container. His gaze is focused on something nebulous in the far distance. On nothing in particular. See you in the morning. He is as silent as the night. The morning will never come. Sorry it had to be this way. He nods. Absent-mindedly, he reaches for a cigarette. Oh, no God. No sooner has it left his pocket than he catches himself. <sighs> Me too. Night, Kim. With effort, he looks at you. Whatever he may feel in this moment is locked away. Oh, Jesus. Inside him. Good night, detective. He says with more gentleness than you heard from him before. Oh, no. Darkness. Oh, God. You. The stink of rot nearly knocks you out. <laughs> For a minute, you can oh, smell Jesus. smoke wafting in from outside. Then it is gone. And you hear it actually let me sleep in the away. trash. This is where you belong. Disgraced cop oh. sleeps in the trash. A deranged law official was found sleeping in a trash container behind the whirling in rags. A hostile cafeteria. This is actually Martins. like a game over. Dart, manager of the establishment, had this to say. He did ask for a free room. And I said no. I don't make the rules of the game. I just play my part. Damn, they actually make you, they they do a game over if you do that shit. Oh my god. Wait, so what happens if you don't get any anywhere to sleep? What if you just wait until the end of the day with nowhere to sleep? And I'll find out another time. Got the Here we go. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. How could anyone forget asshole? Uh, I need a drink. Can you pour me one? Do I have a shaker in my hand? Is this... Is this a shaker? He sounds irritated. You sound irritated? Why? All I need... All I want is a drink. Am I wearing a little bow tie? Am I wearing a bow tie? And doing this? <laughs> oh my god. He shakes the imaginary, imaginary shaker furiously. Am I smiling? Do you see me smiling <laughs> and shaking my little shaker? No. Do you know why? Why? Because I'm not a bartender. I'm a cafeteria manager. Is there anything else you wanted? Play it calm. This man needs to understand you need a drink to help the community deal with police stuff. I'm an alcohol-operated detective. If you want me to clean up the dead body and solve the case, you need to insert alcohol into my mouth. Oh, well, in that case, let me pour you a nice, big, refreshing marinella. Do you want that out of a glass? Or a pineapple? Uh, pineapple sounds good. Don't be an imbecile. I'm not going to serve you a marinella. I have work to do and broken things to fix. If that was all, I'd like to return to it. Got it. I still have to find... I still have to... Oh, shit. This feels right. You belong here. Damn. I need to get the... I need to get the song lyrics so I can sing them up there. All about money, you know. Yep. Oh, shit, she's gone. Lena's gone. Huh. Here we go. There's still this fucking door. The door is closed. Okay. I guess it's time. See you in the morning. Yes. Are we able to talk to each other on the balcony again? No, he just walks away. Alright. Well. That was a somewhat productive day. A mirror hangs on the bar. Right. Here we go. The bed is still cold from the broken window. And not too inviting. But it's yours. 
You've earned it. Go to sleep. The bed is still cold from the wind blowing in from the broken window. The mattress creaks as you close your eyes and try your hardest to fall asleep. What a day. Here we are again, my broken bird. The waves are coming, carrying you away. But you can't go. No. Oh, shit. You have to stay always half aware of yourself. You're not cooperating, brother man. Why? It's your disgusting body. Even through your sleep, you feel a vague discomfort suffusing it. Your belly and your sides are unpleasantly tender. Mm. You wish you could curl up into a fetal ball of safety, but you cannot. Because of the pain. Yo, my limbic system's being a real asshole right now, there I tell you what. a lot of it ever present in your organs. It's like every one of them has their own nasty song to sing. Why does my body hate me? Every cell in your body is moaning in agony, asking, what did we ever do to you? It's all the system's fault. The system failed me. Yes, your body is a system. <laughs> God damn it. And it's failing you because you're failing it. I am an artist and liver damages my art. Oh, yeah, baby. God Frame damn it. Frame your suffering as a masterpiece. Only one problem. No one's watching. It's boring, buddy. Boring as dare. You're just stuck here. In the half world. Could try looking at other people. Really looking. But why would you want to start doing that? That's true. Why would I do that? Mm. I will. I'm looking at people all the time. I like them. Sure you do. They're all so friendly, aren't they? Some of them are. Some of them are nice. Others are scared. Yeah. At least they're interesting. Each one has a process just like yours. Running in the space between their ears. Full of secrets. What do you think you're doing right now? Coming to some... Greater awareness. Look at all these lights blinking in and out of existence. Thoughts. You're just pretending that you're asleep, even to yourself. While the world goes on, let me sleep, dude. You. I don't want to talk to you let right it. now. Let it. Let it. But it never seems to let you go, does it? Time to rise and wipe that shining sweat off as best you can. Gather your bearings. Rock and roll. I am a I am a rock and roll detective, dude. This is my pedigree. Oh, I healed morale. Nice. I didn't even know you healed morale when you slept. Up we get. 7.30. There's like the thought thing there. What's that? Oh. Oh, you can right click to make it appear. I didn't even realize. The bed is still cold from the Right. Okay. Where's Kim? I guess he's gonna be in the lobby. Oh, let me save. Here we go. All right, it's time. We're all here. Yes. Okay, he's just immediately rejoined me. Good. Can I help you? You have anything new? Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. No. Wait, who are you? You look like shit. Your ruffled face reflects in the man's sunglasses. Who are you? Oh, wait, are you the? Precinct guy? Is that a disguise? And I don't mean that as a metaphor. Uh... 
I don't look like shit. Judith, back me up here. You do look... It looks like it's been a tough week for him. No, what do you want? His tone is impatient. Don't even try to win him over. He won't. There's something strange about this guy. Figure it out. You know what it is. It's like the two of you know each other. Just ask him. Tell me the truth. Do you know me from somewhere? Oh, I definitely know you from somewhere. Another life. From where? From another life? Yes. From another life. A different life. Maybe the life of a police officer belonging to the ranks of the... He pauses. To what station do you think you would belong in this alternate and totally fictional reality? <laughs> God damn it. 99,999,999.9? That's exactly right. Down to a fraction. Really? No, not really. Uh... 69. <laughs> he seems to be observing you through the reflective glass of his God eyewear. damn it. There's no reply. Perhaps repeat it? 69. Repeating it gets no reaction from the man with the sunglasses. Suddenly, the world is very quiet. Even God the damn it. wind outside sounds a bit embarrassed. 41st. Okay, okay. That's plausible. That's entirely plausible. Now we're really getting somewhere. He gives you a long, meaningful look at ads. Somewhere good. Uh, let's talk more about that hypothetical Station 41 you mentioned. Okay. What? Oh, the hypothetical 41. Yeah, let's fantasize about that. He blinks aggressively. I'm not busy, you're busy. Let's just play around. Or you're not busy. What would our relationship be in this alternate universe? Let's be crazy. Let's say you and I are partners. How's that for a thought experiment? He... <laughs> Kim's cooler than you. I'm sure he's fucking flattered, but Kim is not part of his thought experiment. In this one, we are partners. The lieutenant is silent. You seem like a bit of a drag. No offense, but I could do better. None taken, my friend. None taken. Let's be honest. There's been some purely fictional talk in our imaginary station in regards of who'd even be worthy of your partnership. Uh-huh. And the conclusion is that a man with your caliber should form his own one-man policing unit. Anyone else would just slow you down. That's true, actually. That's very true. Do you have a crime to solve? Oh, no, no, no. You see, I enjoy watching other better cops solve crimes. And let me tell you, it's been quite a privilege seeing you work. This isn't helping. She says, shaking her head, looking at the man with sunglasses disapprovingly. Um, who else is in our imaginary police uniform? You're not going to believe this, but... Police officers. Yes, sir. Solving crimes. Yes, sir. And, and get this, and not getting that drink on at 2 o'clock. Just some regular boring motherfuckers in suits and uniforms. Nothing spectacularly extravagant like you, the far-out son of Lung. Who is the far-out son of Lung? Oh, it's you, you eccentric genius. I mean, with your unorthodox approach to police work, it has to be you. So does he recognize yet that- Oh, right, because I talked to him on the radio, so he already knows that I lost my memories. Want to tell me more about him or her? Not even a little bit. It's an urban myth about an officer who is so far undercover he can't remember who he is. As I say, it's just an urban myth. You are not the son of Lang. He's trying to protect you from further rough handling, dished out by the sun-glassed man. Huh. I can't imagine that anymore. Conclude. Uh, neither can I, partner. Neither can I. His grey eyes flash from above the glass frames. They feel sad. Huh. It's a mere second, but it feels like you saw something. A gram of compassion in that sadness. Kim, who is this guy? Mm -mm. I'm not getting involved in this. It's not my style, he thinks. Glancing at the man in sunglasses and the woman beside him. Oh boy, they're mad at him. No wonder. He just doesn't recognize them. Got some questions for you. I'm a cop. Oh damn, you just say see you around. About what? You don't look like a cop. You know what you look like. Like a megastar? <laughs> like Guillaume Le Million? Like a megastar? Yes, a superstar cop. Of course. This again. <laughs> I love that this is just this is just constant for Harry. He's always a superstar cop all he the didn't time. Answer 
your question. Now will you answer some questions for me? No. He says calmly and keeps staring at you. Don't you have to? No, he doesn't. If I wasn't clinically depressed, I'd burst out laughing. But I'm gonna go with no right now. If you don't want to answer questions, maybe you don't want to hear me say things? Actually, I don't want to hear you say things. Come on, Jean. Okay, say things. I want to hear you say things. Hear that? He wants you to say things. Say one. Say things. Suddenly, out of nowhere, case-related things start popping up in your head. What was that weird noise? Uh... I have a little problem. The person who was hanged is still hanging there. I still haven't taken him down. You're not shitting me, Milan. I can smell it all the way here. The whole town stinks. We're getting to it. There have been complications. Maybe you can help? I would love to. But I'm busy fucking off and not cramping your style. And that might cramp it, you see? Helping you. Hey, why am I even telling you these things? I don't know. Why are you? Gives you an odd look. Who knows why we do the things Oh, we shit. Do. Somehow, bouncing those ideas off the man with sunglasses felt calming. Like you've done it before. Oh my god, there's more. You want something more? What is it? Let's talk about the hanged man again. Okay, why not? Let's do the old thing over again. We're not wasting time. There is no time. Yeah, of course. I'm doing this investigation. A man is hanged. So, do you know who hanged him? Not yet? Yeah, I can- I don't know. Right. Oh my god, there's more. Okay, bye. Watch out for yourself, loser. Don't call me that. Okay, the man with the sunglasses and his hypothetical Station 41. Weird, right? I know, super weird. There's something missing here. Something you can't put our finger on. You know what? Just ask him. I know it sounds crazy, and you'll probably get laughed at, but still- No, do it. I was thinking the same thing. I should just ask him if we're from the same station. Yes. Just cross it off the list. It's probably not true, though. Let's do it. Again? I can't believe this shit. He shakes his head, looking like he really is having trouble believing this shit. Okay. I have to ask, are we from the same police station? I'm going to say no. Just to see what you'll say to that. What'd you say? Uh, okay. Okay. Jean, he said okay. Give it a rest. Okay. Horse-faced woman, what? Wrong. He is a firefighter, male nurse, animal control agent, something of that kind. Not a cop. Go on with your cop work. Don't let me stop you again. Okay, then see you around. Anything with you? Oh, Kim did a 360? As she notices you. I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. A patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM, below lieutenant and sergeant. Huh. Hold on, you're a patrol officer of the RCM? Yes, I am. Oh, uh, wait one sec. Just all tabbed. Uh, right. I'm a cop too. I know. Here's the real deal. I am the real deal. I'm on a murder investigation. Are you the cavalry? I'm definitely not the cavalry. Is everything alright? Why won't you talk to me? I don't know. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you? Huh. It's cool to see another cop. I thought Kim and I were the only ones. No, you're not. You're not the only cop in the world. She shakes her head and breathes out. Something changes in her. It's pity. Pity comes over her. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? Uh... What precinct are you from? What precinct? <sighs> Am I from? God, he doesn't know. Oh shit. Fucking deranged lunatic. Sunglass wearing man pushes through his teeth. Something's really bugging me. Are we or are we not from the same c uh, police station? God damn it, you leave her alone. Keep your weird bullshit to yourself and be professional for once, for fuck's sake. Do they not know for sure whether or not I actually have amnesia? Can I actually help you with something? She looks at you apologetically. Yes, of course. Preposterous. I mean, you would remember if they were, right? Who forgets their squad mates? That's not possible. You with him point to the man with the sunglasses. Of course I'm with him. Why do you ask? 
Oh shit, you look cute together. Uh... Seems like a cool guy. Well, he's not. He's a sack of shit barely kept together by crazy glue. But at least he tries, unlike you. Please, let's not turn this into another exchange, okay? Okay, you're the police, right? Cool, so am I. Oh, I shit. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, Judith. Uh, what are you, the police, doing here? I'm just looking out for... You? No one. I'm just a man with sunglasses. And you are? Uh, a horse-faced woman. You're a fucking asshole. Are we done here? Okay, bye. So they're just undercover, making sure we don't fuck up. Got it. Oh, hello, dear. Okay, that's done. Oh yeah, the quest about the the food. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Leo says you're friends with Manana. Is that true? The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. They're friends. Good talk, good talk. What's in the borscht you're making there? Point to the large pot. The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. Uh, yes? Hmm. Borscht need more vodka? Hooks up a bottle from the shelf. Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy huh. and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Vodka borscht! I God damn it. it. Turn it the fuck up and then ask for some yourself. Uh, yes. Nod and turn your fingers clockwise. Turn the vodka up. He smiles, nodding vigorously. Then oh, pours shit. Half a bottle of vodka into the pot. With a whistle, he stirs the brew. Can I have some of that brew? He smiles and nods Woo! enthusiastically and chattering away in his language. Ladle some brew into a small thermal cup, then hands it to you. Don't think I need anything else. Stay masculine. Hell yeah. Oh, we got it. Substance use effects. More physique, less morale. Uses left five. Damn, dude. There's five uses of it. That's fucking huge. The man. Okay. Can I look in the door? You see. A heavy steel door. The door does the cold old cold. Uh, right. Yeah, I don't know what's in there. Uh, I guess I could talk to you again, but you're not gonna say anything. You never do. Yeah. Is there anything new with these people? I've got nothing to. No. What about Titus? Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I'm a clown. I just walked up to him, he called me a clown, and then I left. Bye. I don't even know what leads to pursue today. There's so much going on. Oh, let me look at the corpse. I don't know if it's gonna change. I mean, it's been there for days. That's probably... Oh, God, it looks worse. Okay. There, he still is, looking right through you. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure that it looks worse than yesterday. Kuno's, like, Kuno doesn't fucking care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have I been back here yet? What's this? The winch mechanism's been oxid oxidizing for some years. Okay, is this where Kuno's dad is? Pile of Etonite looks stranger now that Kuno told you about his pad. Why am I looking at this pile of the roofing material? Because unless Kuno lied, you should just be able to pull the panels aside. Pull them aside. There it is. You see a shabby little door. Oh, here we go. So this is the shack Kuno mentioned. Let's take a look inside there. Oh, I leveled up. Nice, good shit. Wait, what should I what should I level with? What should I get? Rigorous self-critique. 
maybe yeah why not this takes six hours my god uh must give me something good though or no it only gives me minus one authority embarrassment of the party that's really good okay let's save before we go in here we go here we go oh uh, what's this money the poster says get out of the way or get fucked up okay a silver plate with traces of bone yellow powder be still my beating heart it's amphetamine sweet amphetamine the lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror he's studying you uh i heard amphetamines make you a really good detective are you a really good detective no i'm just a regular detective thank you very much Someone's taken narcotics here, should the police interfere? Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However... He points to the ladder in the corner. See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? The secret path the local kids use. Right. Beard pig's head, it looks mummified. Oh. Oh, uh, what's this? An empty tube of magnesolum? Magnesium supplement. Okay. I see. Where's Kuno's dad? Uh. Oh, there's like a whole thing up here. Wait, what's this? The doorway's going to collapse soon. Restoration pillars meant to keep the ruins together. A postcard. Money. Okay, not bad. And there's nothing nothing back here to get. Okay. This is a, this is a lot of stuff to just look around at here. I got... Okay, some health. Oh, and I can finally go up here. Okay. This, like, belongs to, like, a group of kids, and I'm just stealing from them. Love that. Okay, but it, is there anything good up here? Other than all this? Like, does this lead to anything? I don't- I don't really know. I feel like there's some kind of part to all this that I'm not seeing that I can go to, but... No, I don't know. Maybe that's really just it. Okay. Sure, head back down. I don't know- I don't know if Kuno's gonna have anything new to say or not. I guess we'll see. Oh, Kuno, my boy. Kuno's like Kuno's dad. Kuno doesn't give a fuck about anything. Uh huh. Found your shack. Yeah. Did you fuck in there? What was with the pig head? How's that? Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Oh, good for you. Okay. Were you trying to send me a message? Uh, <laughs> yeah, to the both of you. Watch your ass in Kuno's town, or Kuno's gonna fuck your head off. Got it. Found a plate covered with powder residue. Know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Oh, Kuno boy. Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. <gasps> it's Kaikisuke. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning, too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. What's with the tube of magnesolum, Kuno? It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? He looks at you like you just pointed to the sun and asked what it was. It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a <laughs> ripping mag. And you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. 
He's gonna use it against you, Kuno. I know all about magnesium. I rock it all the time. You're not getting this pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed on playing with your choo-choo. He looks at you, eyes bulging. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. I've heard enough of this. Good call, pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Talk about your shack the again. What do you want with it? Right. Good call, pigmeister. Okay. Kuno doesn't fucking care. There was nothing really there, just a bunch of items. What's this? Can I see anything there with are this? Several footprints in the mud. No. Left by work boots. Uh, what skill is this exactly? Ugh. There are several footprints in the mud. Um. Left by work boots. Anyway, visual calculus. Do I have anything that increases that? Clothes. Yeah, put those on. I mean, I doubt any of this other stuff. No. Uh, I need to sell all this stuff. I've interacted with all of these. Got it. Okay. Physique and morale. Yeah, I don't think I need that. Okay. Yep. This is the best I've got. Let's save. Do I want to save scum this? I don't know. Several footprints in the mud. Oh, it's a good chance. Work boots. Anywhere from wow. Still not doing it. You're bad at this. It seems really important. Tracks on the scene, and I can't read them at all, Lieutenant. Don't beat yourself down. Neither can I. We'll have another look later. I'm gonna have another look right now. Because it's basically just a coin flip. Like, it's it's not that bad. There are several footprints in the mud. Eight pairs of there we boots go. shuffled back and forth in the mud. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? That's right. The hardy boys in the mess hall of whirling in rags. Go over them one by one. One. Standard work boot. Steel I got like the, the Witcher tools. vision. Number 46. Just like Titus was wearing in his booth, this is the big dick, Titus Hardy, the one with the ball cap on his head. Interesting. Is it? They didn't even bother to change boots. Putting them on the scene is easy. Maybe even too easy. Continue counting. Two. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. Either the blonde muscular guy, Glenn, or the young guy with a plectrum around his neck. Uh-huh. Three. Hobnailed work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 43. The inked banger, perhaps. Four. Standard work boot. Number 45 or 46. Theo, the old smoker. You think you even see a tiny fleck of cigarette ash inside the print. Oh, what else? Five. Another standard work boot. Reinforced toes. Number 44. Same as before. Either the musician, Eugene, or the muscle-bound blonde, Glenn. Six. Light as air. Same make of boot. But number 41. Small like a rat. Shanky. Huh, should have gotten this earlier. Better late than never, detective. The whole They're gonna just tell me to fuck off and this won't have counted toward anything. Strange beauty. Count the rest. Seven. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. The imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Fat Angus. Carrying something? The body. Eight. Another standard work boot. Number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the soul. The right soul is smoother, more worn. Curious. A missing eighth Hardy Boy. Aha. Uh -huh. Seven sets of tracks, right? The Hardy Boys were here. Eight, actually. That's all? Interesting. Then one of them seems to be missing. Anything else out of the ordinary? Uh, point. Light step, number 41 shoe. I'm guessing that's the skinny hardy boy. The one with his front teeth missing. 
You mean the rat-faced one? Yes, well, he did look a bit like a rat. You're right. Do you think those prints belong to him? Yes. I could still be wrong, but I'm probably not. A heavy one, 200 kilogram imprint. 200? This could be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built armored man. Maybe it was a fat Harley boy, the one sitting in the middle. Uh-huh. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. You're right, the fat guy from the booth was carrying the victim. Possibly, yes. The lieutenant marks something down in his notebook. An aberration, one soul is smoother than the other. Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the missing Hardy boy. Wonder who he is. Oh, this one's easy. Way too easy. It's a driver. The lorry driver? A driver would wear down the right shoe before the left. The accelerator's on the right. And remember the abandoned lorry cabin we found? With a piece of sandpaper glued to the throttle. Lieutenant adjusts his glasses as his eyes light up with excitement. Oh shit, he loves this. Which means that the missing lady driver was also present at the lynching? That's it. She's the old soul. Huh. Women. Always deceitful. God damn it. God fucking damn it. Uh, is it, she's also the one running the drug trade. Interesting. Now we know who's the missing eighth person at the lynching. Do you think that Hardy and his boys could also be involved in the drug operation? Uh, this would fit what Joyce told us, but I don't want to make any assumptions. Understood. We should still go and see what Titus Hardy has got to say on the matter. This might throw them off, work in our advantage. So, what else? How old do you think the tracks are? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. How do you know? I pulled last week's forecast for Coastal Havashol. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last one day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. Oh yeah, I guess that's the fair. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do you think happened here? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. Indeed. They all stood in a row here. And so far, so oh, good. Only one thing missing. He looks at the tracks, face lighting up from the realization. Of course, there were eight tracks. But there are only seven Hardy Boys. I know. Eight tracks. No, let him have his moment of joy. There's one pair missing from the Union box. The eighth pair. I'm going to say it was our old soul. You're back and the sleepy from Turkey. Oh, nice. What else did you have? How much How much did you have with your turkey dinner? The odd soul was present at the lynching, but, there, but isn't in the mess hall right now. Yes. I doubt the Hardys are going to tell us much, but we should still confront them about the possible drug trade connection. We've been through all of it. Well, I'm glad I put those glasses on. Goddamn. All right, let me go talk to the Hardy boys. We got new dirt on them. Maybe I can finally fucking get the body down. He had mac salad, stuffing, and Spanish rice, and sweet potato pie. That sounds really fucking good. That sounds really good. I don't, I don't usually go for a uh, turkey dinner, though. I'm just not a big turkey guy. I don't, I don't know why. I'd rather just, like, order Taco Bell or something. Looks like... I think I actually did that one here. Him, but the clowns are still here. He doesn't look happy to see you. Uh... Guess what? It connected you to the local drug trade. Like hell you have. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how clean your streets are in precinct 41 kilos. Neighbor brought you food. Oh, nice. That's really good. It's very kind of them. We'll do that. In the meantime, did you, you know mean that like the whole dinner or just some of it? The intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock. 
The person driving it was present at the hanging. It was one of you. We've connected the footprint. Oh, shit. Detective, do you want to deliver the coup de grace? Brought you a plate. Oh, okay, nice. No, the thunder is his. Leave it to the lieutenant. You do the honor. You've learned. You've earned it. Nod to the lieutenant. Thank you. Hell yeah. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade because it's all controlled by you. You're the drug trade. Oh, he got him. That's a mighty interesting theory. I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. But yeah, I'm glad you had a good turkey dinner. <laughs> yeah, oh. Theoretically. That's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You know, it's probably the worst possible time you could have cut in, Eugene. You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place, of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. For the good of the community, of course. Uh... Good idea. People are always going to do drugs. At least this way you have some control over it. Get them to admit more. Thank you. Theoretically. Of course. Aw, he said theoretically. Thank you. He said in Minecraft we can't do anything now. You only like the dark meat of turkey. If it's the breast, you don't care for it as much. I find, like... I find, like, turkey's drier than most meat. I don't know. Not, like, inherently. It's just that every time I've had it... It's just like a, a tiny, tiny bit dry. Gotta, gotta put some gravy on it. They're all about the ham. Oh yeah, I, th I think ham's better than turkey all day. All fucking day. He seems genuinely surprised at your response. In a good way. Takes more effort to make it juicy, yeah. Titus, I'm amazed. Where is the same professionalism when it comes to other topics? You're doing great. I hardly have to interfere at all. I don't know, Lizzie. I guess theoretical things don't make me emotional. Now, was there anything else? I was sort of gonna get my brewski on. Shit. Not quite yet, Mr. Hardy. There were eight sets of prints on the crime scene. There are only seven Hardy boys here. The eighth Hardy, the one who's missing, she runs the thing, right? My answer is... Fuck. Off. Mind your own business. There is no eighth Hardy. I run this goddamn scene. Brining then basting throughout the cooking, it's high maintenance, yeah. I don't think I'd ever wanna ever wanna cook a turkey. I don't think I'd be able to do it. Finally you got something out of him. This could prove useful in the future. And here we go. Back to the usual. The woman sighs. I know, I know. Fatty walked on all fours. He's so fucking fat, he left two sets of footprints. <laughs> Damn, that's fucked up. Go fuck your mom, Dennis. <laughs> Go fuck your mom. That's more like it, boys. You heard him. It was Angus on all fours. Anything else you need to know? Found eight sets, but there's only seven of you. Where's the eighth? What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us and we're It's all a hardy girl. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. He shakes his head. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... This person Glenn wants to hire. He really respects her. Ah. Okay, so she was, uh... The, the eighth person was like, they, they were thinking of hiring her. Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? So let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. Huh. Nothing to do with your shit. And He points at the lieutenant. You're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Oh my god. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. There's no point in pushing it further. He thinks this is already a victory. We'll learn more about this. We're doing it. We're doing the mystery. Sooner or later. I'm gonna take off now. We kind of we got him good there. Kind of, not really. Do you have anything to say? 
I've got nothing to say to you. Are you the hardy girl? Why Obviously not, but we'll ask. I am not. He says dryly. You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a model. Even a model? Glenn, I went to law school. I am an attorney. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of Le Debutante International. Yeah, get a grip, Glenn. She went to law school. So fucking what? Lots of models are actually really smart people, fuckwad. No, Glenn. They aren't. Her tone is cold and uninvolved. Damn. Alright. Uh... I mean, maybe I could ask you if you saw an eighth person? Can I help you? No. Okay. Anything to do with these guys? Again? Nope. You? Yes, sir. No. Alright, I guess we're leaving then. But I got another lead. Or I guess not a lead, but a developing lead. More stuff on the eighth person. Uh... Maybe I could ask Kuno if uh, he saw anything? I feel like we already asked that and he said no. Uh, no. Nope. Yep. Uh, still don't have a way to get the body down. So, you know, that's great. Uh, maybe once I get my gun back, I can shoot the rope. I can't think of any other way. Oh, I got a cough. Right. Uh, anything new with Kim? Yes. No. Okay, what leads do we have? Ask Renee about the photo. Eh, sure, why not? I'm I'm here. I might as well. Oh, he's all the way over here. Hello, Renee. Officer. Ah. God damn it. Pull yourself together, Rene. What do you want? Is he sick? Saw the statue of Philippe the Third near the roundabout. Ah yes. King Philip III, on his steed, a reminder of what Revachel once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine-snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. That sounds base to me. Cocaine? cocaine -um? Sounds like our kind of king. And, just imagine what kind of cocaine a king would have had. A superpower! Feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. How should a true king rule? Decisively. Without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Huh. Seems to me a leader should put the care of his people before himself. A nation is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try it. Don't get started on that again. Oh, shit. What happened, happened. Oh, uh, there's some weariness in his voice now. He's heard this rant many times before. The carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. No one and nothing Can't be that unbreakable if he got sick. Mind. He is as rigid as they come, still in that antique uniform. It's a symbol for him. So what was that about cocaine? Oh, old Philip was a big fan of the purple nose candy the nobility loved so much. A cocaine connoisseur of sorts. <laughs> His egocentricity is borderline legendary. You can't even take the responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility weighing on the shoulders of a ruler? He asks, obviously annoyed. That's why the Philippian kings use cocaine. A uh -huh. clarity of vision. To aid in their work. Regnum cocaine. Revachal's finest years. He seems to grow taller, brimming with pride about the past. I'm satisfied with this explanation. Yeah, course, you know. Clarity of vision. Awareness. Philippe the Third was even brought into this world with the help of cocaine. Oh, of course, the of course. Medic administered a dose to his mother when she was in labor. And it is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest, of course. He was able to connect with higher realms. Uh -huh. Higher realms. Of course, it all makes sense. Uh, sounds like an irresponsible behavior for a monarch. Drug users shouldn't even operate heavy machinery, much less rule countries. From what I've seen of the offices of the LCM, uh, uh, 
but I don't want to get into a debate about drug policies. Oh, we all, we almost debate brought him. Let's talk about something else. Right. Uh, Renee, I found your guard booth. Uh, okay, I can't look at that. Yes. The Debadios Union pays me to stand with you during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. Uh-huh. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night anyway, and money is tight. He adds with a slight sigh. Is that true, that old people don't need to sleep as much? I feel like that's not true. He feels like he has to justify himself for some reason. You must have seen something the night of the murder. Your booth, booth looks right into the yard. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. Who was working your shift that night? No one. The booth has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Huh. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officers. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, René. Oh. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. Mostly decorative? The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. He tries to argue. Evra created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabinier's pension of honor and PTSD isn't something a man can live off. A decorated Kingsman collecting there reflects bad on the whole neighborhood. His words. I mean, it's nice of him, I guess. I mean, you, you could maybe, I don't know. I, like, put your own money into the pension fund instead of forcing an old man to work, but I, it's a start, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh... Should rent out his services, invest the profits, get- no. There's nothing wrong with Tara collecting, it's my side thing too, proudly hold out the bag. Fuck it. Oh, I didn't mean to imply there's something wrong with that. I do it too. Everyone does it. It's an excellent side thing. Hell yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Can we conclude the topic of my guard boost now? He is not going to become an entrepreneur. I saw a picture in there. You were in it. You looked happy. Who's the girl? She is nobody. This is none of your concern. And I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. The lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu. And she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, like I said, it would be up anyway. So might as well keep an eye out. Keeps my senses sharp. Uh huh. Let me see if I can get anything equipped for my composure. Composure, composure. Yeah, I don't think so. Damn, that's rough. Okay. Uh, do I lose any composure from any of my blows? Keys, key to room one. Deborah Dura Union card. You can use bullets? I only just looked at that. Plus one composure. Right. I guess try Did the check anyway. Still, all you see is an old soldier refusing to replace his uniform with a civilian attire. Anything else I can assist you with. Okay. Anything with you. It is such a pleasure to see you again, officer. How may I head the citizens militia on this fine day? Mention Jean Marie Boulou. Bo 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 Who was that? Oh, sweet Jenny. She was the finest woman in all of Revachol. Maybe the entire world. Oh shit. Do not defile her memory, Gaston. Let her rest in peace. Aww. So you both knew her? We knew her. All right. Lived on the same street our entire lives, just two houses apart. The three of us have been best friends since we were four. She was Rene's first girl back when the prick was 16. 
They were courting till he decided he'd rather die for some great ideal than just be happy. And then you stole her from me. Damn. He jerks forward but grabs his chest and stops. Easy, fellas. No need for this to get ugly. Oh, officer. It already got ugly nearly 80 years ago when the three of us were just learning to walk and talk. You stole her from me. Rene repeats, trying to steady his breathing and still clutching his well, chest. Technically, you stole her from me because we'd been pretty close ever since you two had that falling out over the ink you spilled over a pretty yellow dress. We were just boys then. This was different. You. Paul Veteran looks at you and nods. I'm surprised the both of you are still on speaking terms. What the fuck? No point starting this all over again. For the thousandth and the first time. Especially when we have company. Officer. Uh, what happened to her? She died of pneumonia two winters ago. It was a quiet passage. Peaceful. I feel like pneumonia isn't a quiet or peaceful passing. Isn't that, like, really painful? Rene and I were both by her bedside when she... He pauses, searching for the right word. Died. No use sugarcoating it. Won't bring her back. Will it now? Departed. Hmm. Until the very hand she couldn't decide between us. The most indecisive woman I've ever met. A quick grimace of pain Aww. passes over Rene's features, but he immediately regains control. His face now a dispassionate mask again. Why do you think she was indecisive? She could never make up her mind about anything. What to have for breakfast, favorite color, or which one of us to marry. It could have just been Polly. Damn. That's rough. She was always leaving one of us for the other. But never long enough to actually get married. Wow, you just be women, right? Uh, nothing wrong with weighing your options. It's a bit, it's a bit odd. Heck, technically, we're both still engaged to her. You always confused her. Couldn't let us be happy. So just her with your fancy words and pastries. He suddenly remembers you are still there. Falls silent. And turns away. Damn, they literally could have just been Polly. Would have fixed of everything. Course, officer. Memories are all we have left. Talk more Spirits, about her. No. Of course. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Nice little conversation. I'm surprised they ever even came up again. Can I talk with you? I ain't got shit. Okay. I can go talk with Joyce. Oh, wait, there's still you. I haven't found your husband yet. Okay. Uh, anything back here? Other than Joyce, I guess. Man, I love this game. Oh, wait, what's this? Just an ordinary wall. Uh, I want to look at the wall! Okay. And then, have I really looked back here at all? There might be, might be some stuff I missed. What's this? This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air. And there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. The royal lion, Guillaume's kitten. Oh, shit. This knocker will last a lifetime and then some. That's probably the door I've had mentioned. We still need to get the key from this manana first, though. Oh, yeah, I forgot to talk to that guy. Oops. Uh, what's... Oh, it's a person. You see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. He says in a quiet voice. Despite the cold, his shirt hangs unbuttoned on his frame. Why are you whispering? It sounds like you're already in trouble. There's no trouble. I'm just speaking in a lowered voice. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. It's okay. the god of cigarettes and youth. Ask him if he's got anything to spare. Is this the same voice actor that did Tommy? Kind of sounds like it. Can I at least have a cigarette? Apologies, but this is my last one. Takes another drag and shivers. The god himself has denied you absolutely. God damn it. 
I need absolution. Absolution? I don't know that brand, but I'm pretty sure you can get Astra's at the fridge. God damn it. Can you just like toss that one down? I'm not sure that's a good idea. Shut up and throw, kid. I'm not throwing anything. There's no way you'd catch that cigarette. Anyway. Alright, bump the mic. What, really? Yes, really. Don't, Don't do even it. Don't try. You'll just embarrass yourself. You're right, that was obviously a bad idea. Forget I said anything. As you wish. He takes another drag. Actually, the Jean de Marie really needs to talk to you. Is it really that important? He asks you, adjusting his shirt. Like a nervous cat. He keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Uh, can you tell me your name? My name? My name is Martin Martinez. God damn it. Martin Martinez? Good local name. <laughs> Let's go. Back. Jesus. Looks like you've got a good view of the Whirling's backyard. Can you tell me anything about the hanging? I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Did you look at Kim? No, not you two. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Uh, Lieutenant takes out his little blue notebook and writes something down. Last week? I don't know. Look. He looks around the courtyard again. Old patio chairs and dead house plants litter the scene. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. What kind of friend? He was my Sunday friend. What's hey, a Sunday friend? Sunday friend. How intriguing. What's your friend's real name? Did he see something? He doesn't reply. Gesturing. No. With his cigarette. In the neighboring windows, you can see faint reflections. Of his silhouette, all from different angles. Someone hides behind a curtain. Those windows have eyes. Oh those shit! Eyes are watching, spying on you through. Uh oh. I need to get inside the apartment building. Can you help? Help you? No, sorry, gendarme. I have to run. No. God damn it. We won't. He takes one last drag of his cigarette before stubbing it out on the balcony. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. <gasps> Convince him to stay. Time to bring Shit. out your secret charm. Tears and beg him. Oh no! Show him your emotional side. Throw yourself before <laughs> his very feet. <laughs> oh god! Please don't go. I'll stop drinking. I'll take the trash out. Just please don't leave me. Trash? Young man shakes his head in confusion. Please don't go. I'll even stop smoking inside. Please stop. Listen, I really have to go. With a flick of his wrist, he sends the extinguished cigarette sailing over the trail. Ah, the there rail. it goes. Wasted. You would have gotten at least a few good drags out of it. Good luck with the investigation. He walks away. Goodbye, smoker on the balcony, Mar Martin Martinez. Fuck. He's gone. Lieutenant puts away his notebook and turns to you. We should run after him, see where he went. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. So we just give up? He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. There That's has true. to be a way of getting inside the building. Let's go check out the door near the pier again. Once we found the way in, we can ask around for his apartment. Great, let's do that. Leave. So I'm assuming this is locked. There must be another way oh. into the building. What the fuck was that? What? Why was it so loud? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> My ears hurt. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what the fuck? Is that is there something wrong with the game? Is the is the audio gonna be that bad from now on? What the fuck? Him why? Yes. No, he sounds fine now. What the fuck? Oh, that really hurt. That really hurt my ear. Okay. Um. 
I guess, go by the pier. Jesus Christ, that hurt. Holy shit. Do you have anything new to say? Hello again. No. Oh, I thought she just fell over. Oh, what about Joyce? There's gotta be a lot of new You're stuff back. with you. Good. What can I help you with? I talked to El Everard Clare. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? Finally. Time to choose sides. Oh, shit. Uh... I didn't. Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Or wait, actually... She answers her own question. Corruption. Yeah. That's how he's done it. Fantastic. Vern-like. Corruption. Reaching into the bowels of the earth. She looks at the ground and nods. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt Verm myself. Somehow I don't believe you. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. Yeah, yeah. Tell her she'll like you for it. <gasps> oh shit, we're in. Yes, you're disgusting. Mess, <laughs> God damn it. Completely. Let's gossip. I love that he's just he's just here. He's hanging out. He he gives quips sometimes. Uh The money you gave me, would it make things weird if I shared info, I mean? Weird? Oh no. One of the positive things to come from the revolution is the unhindered exchange of information, you see. Even when it comes to trade secrets. Which isn't to suggest our talks constitute corporate espionage. Even if they did, it would be fine. Yeah, but true. don't, since you logged the money as a donation, and this is clearly... Just gossip between friends. Uh, Everett's helping me find my gun. Oh. That's so helpful of him. Did she just hiccup? The lieutenant looks at you, and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. When I said be wacky, I didn't mean wildly, grossly <laughs> God damn it. and damaging to the RC. No, no, it's fine. Unconventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this, to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. Yeah, of course. Incredible. She's on the level, she gets Simply it. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? Mr. Ever is helping me find my gun. Ah, uh, yes. As you said. She looks confused for a moment. Please, don't get him in a loop. If he gets in a loop, it will last forever. Ask him to say something else, please. Of course. Thank you for the advice. I'm glad you were here to assist. Hell yeah. Your other dealings with Everard are still of considerable interest to me. The lieutenant will be more lenient toward sharing those, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I helped him turn up the heat on the borscht. Did you now? What sort of borscht is he making? The cook makes it to keep the strikers drunk, helps them strike. The strike brew. That's a classic. And by turn up the heat, I presume you mean put more alcohol in it? Yes. Is that gonna help us at all? Why, if I may ask? Why make them more drunk? Aren't they corked enough already? Yes, detective. What were you hoping to accomplish with this strange thing? Uh... I worship Al Ghul in many ways. Very curious. A very curious thing to do. She blinks both eyes. As opposed to blinking just one? Truly. But that's how he operates. He just does things, man, and then talks about them, even if it's inappropriate. Of course. A strange equanimity has overtaken the lieutenant. He's just going with the flow now. Easier that way. What else? Uh, I'd rather talk about something else if you don't mind. Of course, okay. Detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? No. Okay. Huh. 
I'm actually kind of surprised that Convo didn't go on for longer. I think she's still the character I've had the longest talk with. A Anyways. A metal door guards the southwest. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. could be a way into the apartment building the smoking man have vanished into. Hey, are you there? I've checked the backyard but couldn't get in that way. Good. We had enough problems with bums and drunks and thieves loitering in the hallway. You have no business here. Convince her you're a real policeman. You're well versed in the kind of threatening legalese that implies criminal liability, but in fact has no meaning whatsoever. Ma'am, your non-compliance is hindering a police matter. I may be forced to refer you for potential prosecution. Oh, shit. I know my rights, and don't you mom me, boy. Boy snaps back. Miss, would it help if we offer to show you our badges? Ah, yes, the... <laughs> One and no badge we have. <laughs> you hear the click of a night latch before the lady on the other side gets caught in a coughing spasm. I don't care about your stinking badge. Just come in. She manages to say with a wheeze. Huh. We're actually in. Well, you know, I've been playing for a while and I'm getting kind of tired and like hungry, so I think I might end it here. Just for tonight. Um, definitely gonna play more of this tomorrow, though. And then, uh, probably gonna play something else in next week for a little bit to break up the monotony. But, uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see what we do. But yeah, I'm having a really good time with this. This is a, this is a really good game. Game's fucking great. Um, I don't think I have anyone to raid. I do not. So, that, that's just gonna have to be it for now. No raid. But, really fucking fun time. Um, thanks to everyone who came out. Uh, gonna, gonna do more tomorrow. Not sure what time. Probably, probably around the same time. Maybe an hour or so earlier. I, uh, I'm trying to not stream so late at night, but... I, I don't know. I really enjoyed the one, like, 2pm Eastern stream I did, and then I just didn't, didn't do it again. So, maybe, maybe next week. But yeah, uh, see you, see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Or Disco Elysium.